I hope you have revised. Okay, Shreya, you answer. Uh, list of all exempt incomes without looking. Daily allowance received by MP MLA, correct? And 10 penalties awards from government. Correct. And 10 penalties awards from government. Correct. Correct. Interest incomes on ten fifteen gold bonds and post bar post office savings bank account. And what is the amount of exemption for post office savings bank account? Three thousand five hundred. Then. No, 1032. That is 1032. 1032. Yeah. Correct. 1010 D. Amount received from life insurance policy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Vipin, you answer. Yeah. What are the two M's in D W Ramu Fakir G? Salary received by MPMLA taxable. Who will pay the tax on income of minor child? Parent whose parent whose income is higher. Correct. Okay. Then, Gaurav, you answer. What are the five heads of income? House property. Correct. Now, income from house property. When income is called income from house property? Yes. There has to be a house which is a structure of four wall and a roof. And you should be the owner. Okay. What if you are not the owner of the house and still you get rent income? Means it is a rented house given further on a rent. Then it is subletting. Okay. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And that is income from other sources. Okay, okay. okay. You answer what is capital gains? Yeah, profit or loss on sale of asset. Okay. Okay, Vivek, you answer. List of exempt incomes, this whole list. Good, very good. Gold bonds. Income of minor child, it is exempt up to how much? What is the limit of exemption? 1500 per, per child. Per child. Okay. Award from government, 1017, correct. Then? Then section 10. 1019, 1019. Family pension received by? Received after the death of an employee of armed forces. What to say? Employee of armed forces. After the death of an employee of armed forces. So that was family pension. Then
you say ten ten D. Ten eleven, ten eleven A is remaining. What is ten eleven and what is ten eleven A? Ten eleven. Ten eleven is such a famous account. Everyone has PPF account, interest on PPF account. Then ten eleven A. Okay, Vishaga, you answer. Yeah. We are computing income for the year which is going on or for the previous year. We compute income for the current year or the previous year. And what is our previous year for our exam? 23-24. And what do you mean by assessment year? Yes, the year in which you calculate the income of the previous year and you pay the tax. That is called assessment year. And in our exam, will they ask any year or our year is fixed? Fixed. Previous year, if they say it is 23-24 and if they say assessment year, it is 24-25. Okay. You tell me five heads of income. And then what is capital gains here? Means here capital gains means what? Okay. And then what is income from? Okay, which two salaries are salary, but they are not treated as income from salary. There are two salaries which are actually popularly called as salary, but they are not classified as income from salary. Correct, good. Salary received by partner and salary received by MPMLA because they are not employees. Okay. Income from salary means when you receive it as an employee. Okay. Okay, Vanshika, you answer. All exempt incomes, the same thing. Sukanya Samridhi account, correct, correct, good. Yeah. Okay, now see, last lecture we started with the topic income from other sources. See, just to have a recap of the previous lecture, see in the last lecture, what did I say? In income tax subject, what is your objective? To know how to calculate the income and how to calculate the tax. And incomes are classified into four categories. Salary, house property, business, capital gains, and income from other sources. And each income we have to calculate separately. And then we combine all the incomes. And after we combine all the incomes, what do you get? Look at this. No, what we get is called gross today income. And then there is something called deductions. And then net taxable income, on this you compute tax at the rate of certain percentage. But how to calculate tax that we have not started. We have just started with right now, how to calculate this figure. And this way we have the mission of learning to calculate each and every amount in this statement. Okay. So, in income from other source, there was a keyword I gave you. That was D.W. Ramu Fakir Ji. In this keyword, you have to remember that which incomes are taxable and which incomes are exempt. And most of the incomes in this keyword are taxable only. Okay. But there are certain incomes which are exempt. Under section 10, 1, 10, 17, blah, blah, blah. That is what we did. Okay. 
and in this still we have to study the theory of the gift okay now gift theory i am not starting right now first i will take you to another theory called deductions see here there is something called deduction under section 57 okay now see every chapter every head of income you will find deduction there are how many heads five heads. five heads under each head of income you will find a concept of deduction and you know why the concept of deduction because whenever you earn the income you have to incur some expenditure first to earn any income there are some related expenditure and for expenditure there is a concept of deduction and you know what basically government says see if you are earning the income but if to earn the income you incur some expense you can net it off and after netting off your expense you have to pay the tax on the net amount because see government cannot ignore my expense yes government has seen my income you are earning so much but to earn so much i have to incur some expense for example i am starting a coaching class okay rather i am running a coaching class so in coaching class i might get lot of fees from students but to earn fees from the students don't i have to incur expenses i have to incur expense of rent i have to incur expense of electricity i have to incur various expense like salary to staff etc only when i incur the expense i am able to generate the income so that's why under each head of income whether it is salary house property what are the five words income from business capital gains income from other source you will notice you earn the income or to earn income you have to incur some expense and these expense government says you can minus and after deducting the expense whatever is your net income on that you have to pay the tax and that is good for us why because if government ignores my expenses and government says to help with your expense we are income tax people we simply see your income and we will tax your income only ignore your expense it would be unfair see income has come but it has come because i have incurred the expense i am getting fees from my students but because i have incurred the expense that's why government cannot ignore my expenses so whenever government considers my expenses so it is by way of a deduction but every chapter it will not be the same section huh? under this chapter which we are doing right now income from other source it is deduction under section 57 and then when you study income from salary you will find deduction under section 16 and under income from house property under section 24 so this way different sections will be there in different chapter but one thing is common under each head of income there will be concept of deduction and deductions are connected with your expenses okay so in short see while income from other source some solving also if you come across some expenditure you have to deduct it from the related income whichever income it is related to you have to deduct it from that say for example look try this see i will take five examples right now just keep a count and in this five example i am going to set five important rules which you have to eventually by heart and these are rules of section 57 so how many rules you will have to by heart five so one by one and for five rules i have taken five example so first rule is a basic rule which i said also that if there is some expenditure connected with some income you have to deduct it so just see it practically look for example i have received rent of plant and machinery 5000 per month now see whenever they give you income per month you will have to convert it into 12 months because we compute income for one month or one year one year, one year. income compute computation is done from year to year so this i will have to convert into one year so that you can do multiply by 12 and then they will give you expenses as soon as you see expense you should be remembering deduction under section 57 and since this expense you have to minus obviously first i will write the rent amount in the inner column and then i will deduct the related expenses and then net amount will come in the outer column okay so this point is a simple point see i have already done the presentation look at this first my rent is 5000 per month so multiply by 12 that comes to 60000 and then see when you deduct the expenses don't deduct it casually you have to make a formal atmosphere deduction under section 57 it is compulsory to write this statement which statement deduction under section 57 then write whatever is given in the question 
it's not necessary they will give you repair expenditure they can give anything and you don't need to bother much once you feel the expenditure is connected to my rent income you can deduct it and see why it is a connected expenditure because see only if i repair my plant and machinery on timely basis i will be able to generate rent income and if i don't maintain my machinery properly how will i get the rent so it is connected expenditure and obviously they will always give you some connected expense but in real life people try to show some unconnected expense also because people want to deduct anything and everything so that the income becomes less and the tax is less but income tax department these people are very smart whenever they see something you have deducted they will check is it related or not for a student it is not a botheration because for a student they will always give you related expense only but in real life they have to check that anything and everything you cannot minus just because you have incurred expense simply minus it's not like that the expenditure should be related to the income so here my income is rent of plant and machinery so this repairing is of plant and machinery only so it is related so you can minus but while deducting you have to write deduction under section 57 and the net amount will go to the outer column okay so this is a basic rule now i'll go to the second example now you will find something new try this in the question they will give you say agricultural income for example 5 lakhs and they will give you some expense and let's assume the expenditure is connected with agriculture only okay now firstly agriculture income you have to always check whether it is in india or it is in foreign because only if it is in india it is exempt under section 101 but if it is foreign land it will be taxable so if problem is silent you can always assume it is in india so assume it is in india so it will be exempt so now what to do what about these expenses yes since the income is exempt do we put the amount or we put the dash yes, yes last lecture i didn't I say if the income is taxable you put the amount if it is exempt we put dash and this is an exempt income and being an exempt income i am going to put a dash dash means i am not writing the amount only so when i am not writing the amount only so obviously i will have to ignore the expenses in fact i am not even writing the amount of income so when income itself is not returned why will i write the expense but see some students get carried away as soon as they see expense they see oh i will have to deduct i will have to deduct and what they do they take 5 lakhs in the inner column they deduct 1 lakh and they write outer column 4 lakhs and they suddenly realize oh this was exempt but see why to do such mistake first you should realize once you come across some exempt income simply ignore the expense the paper setter will deliberately give you expense to confuse you but you have to be smart enough that this income is exempt to to help with the expenses so i should actually ignore this expense see i have put a cross mark and how will be the presentation of the agriculture income i will write here agriculture income and in the outer column i will put dash and in bracket i will write exempt under section 101 okay so see i have shown here already correct so in short see at the beginning i said that whenever some expenditure is there you have to deduct from the related income but that policy of deduction you have to follow only if the income is taxable if the income is exempt ignore the expense okay so see two rules we have set in two examples taxable income deduct the expense exempt income ignore the expense what did i say taxable income deduct the expense exempt income ignore the expense but don't think sir has taught something special about agriculture see this point doesn't talk something special about agriculture the point is not of agriculture if the income is exempt let it be agriculture income or some other income agriculture was just an example to teach my students but don't buy it oh sir has taught something special about agriculture see it's not about agriculture anything if it is exam put dash ignore the expense similarly in my previous example although i took the example of rent but i didn't mean to talk something special about rent what i meant to say 
if there is some taxable income and some expenses are given deducted now whether it is rent or dividend income or any income let it be rent was just an example okay similarly here agriculture was an example so what did i say total five rules we are going to set two rules which we have set is taxable income deduct the expense exempt income ignore the expense now try this one example 3 winnings from lottery and then there are expenses on lottery tickets now tell me winnings from lottery is taxable income or exempt income it is taxable income and as per what i said right now taxable income deduct the expense so what you would do taxable income so first you will write the amount of 1 lakh in the inner column and then there are some expenses for purchasing lottery tickets you know when you win the lottery first you have to purchase lottery tickets there are lottery tickets and luckily you win the lottery sometime and sometimes your money goes waste so here he has won the lottery but for that he had incurred 5000 expense so usually what the student will do he would deduct 5000 in the net amount 95000 you will write in the outer column but this is wrong winnings is an exception for winnings even if you incur expense of 10 rupees also government does not allow you deduction reason i will tell you but the rule is winnings is taxed on gross basis what do you mean by gross basis no deduction of any expenditure gross means you have to keep it gross 1 lakh you are not allowed to minus any expenditure although you will feel no i purchased a lottery ticket that is why i got the winning it is a connected expenditure the 5000 expenditure is related to lottery only although it is related but still government doesn't give you deduction can you guess why so reason is what you know you might feel that this expenditure is related with winnings but see what law says you know you have won lottery not because you incurred the expense because you were lucky your winnings is connected with your luck and not with the expenditure see if winnings would have come if lottery would have come by incurring expenditure everyone would purchase the lottery tickets even i should start teaching in the class i should just go and keep buying lottery tickets if by purchasing a lottery ticket if by incurring the expense there is a certainty that i will win the lottery then why to take the hassles of starting a coaching class so see it is not because of expenditure you are winning the lottery you won the lottery because of luck so it is connected with your luck and not with your expense and what law says if your income is connected with expense connected connected then you minus connected expense but lottery winning is not connected with the expense although you feel no but sir expenditure is for buying lottery only see expenditure is for buying lottery people buy many lotteries but everyone do not win lottery lottery comes out of expense of luck luck see in my hindi bhai jaise it has got kismat connection and not kharcha connection lottery doesn't have kharcha connection kharcha means expense connection it has got kismat connection kismat means it is your luck okay and one more thing see government says there are some incomes for which you have to put hard work you have to spend then you are able to earn but tell me in lottery what hard work you have to put what spending you have to put nothing see for example to generate fees in my coaching class i have to put hard work also and i have to put investments also i have to incur so much and i have to put hard work then only i am able to earn but for lottery winnings the perception is go of government is what you are getting income free free in the sense you you didn't put any hard work it was mere luck no hard work mere luck not you don't have to big you put huge investments also you know lottery ticket hardly comes for 10 rupees 20 rupees 50 rupees see this 5000 you might have purchased so many lotteries and then luckily one lottery was a winning lottery so since lottery income doesn't come due to hard work or expenditure it comes because of luck government says we don't want to allow you this deduction and anyways it is not a big expenditure 
टू विन अ लॉटरी ऑफ से टू लैक्स फाइव लैक्स वन करोर यू हार्डली इनकर सम एक्सपेंडिचर बट गवर्नमेंट से वी विल नॉट कंसिडर डैट एंड वेन यू ऑल्सो गेट द इनकम इजीली गवर्नमेंट इज ऑल्सो बिकमिंग ग्रीडी कि वी ऑल्सो वॉन्ट द टैक्स सी इफ अ पर्सन हैज टू पुट लॉट ऑफ हार्ड वर्क देन गवर्नमेंट हैज सिंपथी ऑल्सो ओ यू पुट सो मच हार्ड वर्क सो मच एक्सपेंस देन यू आर एबल टू अर्न देन गवर्नमेंट इज अलाउिंग यू टू नेट ऑफ ऑल्सो बट यूर हार्डली सम हार्ड वर्क इज इट इज अ मियर लक so government said don't feel bad expenditures connected with lottery will not be allowed see it is not just about lottery huh? there are so many winnings like you win in horse race you know in horse race what happens there are various horses running in the race and you do bet horse number 3 will win horse number 7 will win and while you place a bet you have to incur some expenditure that i place a bet of 100 rupees i place a bet of 1000 rupees in horse number 5 so when you place a bet you have to spend but see many times this way many people keep betting on the horse but they lose the money but if someone wins it is not because he has placed the bet it is because of lucky so in short the bottom line is this income has connection with your luck and not with your expenditure that's why ignore the expense just a moment he has got some doubt you are you are raising hand okay fine so tell me how will be the presentation of this thing then winnings from lottery i will simply put it in the outer column and expenses i will ignore it okay but see this point was specifically for winnings huh? see in the previous point what did i say see it's not about agriculture whenever any exempt income ignore the expense in the first example also what did i say see it's not about rent whenever any taxable income ignore sorry deduct the expense but the example 3 this is dedicated to winnings only that for winnings whether it is winnings from lottery horse race or any type of winning gambling etc if you get some winnings nature income then the connected expenses are ignored okay so i will put a cross mark on this because you have to ignore expenses and then the presentation would be simply write the winnings in the outer column as fully taxable fully taxable means full amount will be taxed no deduction okay then this was third example this way we have to learn five examples total five points are there in section 57 okay try this now even this example is specially something for dividend huh? it's not that dividend is just an example this point which i am going to explain it is specially for dividend first without what i am going to explain without the knowledge of that try on your own based on what i have taught you right now what did i say if some income is taxable then you can deduct the expense so dividend income is taxable dividend is taxable or exempt dividend income is taxable it is the first alphabet in dw ramu fakir ji so it is taxable income so being a taxable income what you would do whatever expenses are given in the question you will minus okay see what expenses are given in the question let us see bank charges why bank charges see usually when you get dividend from the company you get in the form of a check and that check goes to my bank account and you know what bank has to do they have to collect dividend from the company and deposit in the account for example i got dividend from reliance so what my bank will do they will collect dividend from reliance and deposit in my account and for that services they charge that is called bank charges this comes automatically as a debit in our passbook bank statement okay so there are usually bank charges in dividend income and what is this thing interest on loan to invest how come this is an expenditure see why you get dividend because you invested in shares dividend is an income from shares but you have to invest in shares but to invest in shares you need money so you might have taken that money on loan so see this loan means what i have taken loan from someone to invest and if i take loan i have to pay interest also so on one hand by investing i am getting dividend 
and on the other hand there is a loan on my head on that loan i have to pay interest so can you feel there is some income also and expenditure also income is in the form of dividend because i invested in shares so i am getting dividend but to invest i had to take loan on loan i have to pay interest so that becomes my expenditure so these are all connected expenditure so usually what you should do dividend income first i will write it in the inner column and then my expenses 1000 bank charges then interest on loan see interest on loan you have to pay huh? you have taken the loan so whenever you take loan you have to pay interest so you will minus this and what will come in the outer column 70 73000 this will be the net amount of dividend this is the way you will do look okay but this is wrong why you know because there is one special point for dividend income for dividend income you know what loss is you will not get any deduction you will get only one deduction that is interest on loan and that to maximum 20% of your dividend income what did i say repeat in case of dividend income you will not get any deduction for expenditure you incur this expense that the expense this that anything any expenditure you incur you will not get deduction but you will get one deduction and that is only in respect of interest on loan in case you have taken loan to invest in shares on that you have paid interest that is the only thing which you can minus and that also there is a limit what limit has said did you hear maximum 20% of a dividend income why it is like this i will tell you the logic see as i told you in the last lecture you should know the reason for everything why see just because it is a rule you cannot by heart many students think like this only income tax is a law law is a rule so we have to by heart it why there is always a logic behind the law okay so law has not come up suddenly the law maker has got some line of thinking so you should know why the rule is special for this i will tell you the reason but first for the timing let's go mechanically as per what did i say that for dividend income you cannot minus anything except interest on loan so see this i will cancel wait bank charges not allowed are you seeing my language for expenditure my language is allowed not allowed and for income my language is taxable exam so bank charge is an expense so see the way i am saying it is not allowed see for me it is very used to because i keep teaching tax since 25 years but for you it's a new subject so you should learn the language also and notice how i am saying okay so for bank charge what did i say it will not be allowed means government will not allow you to minus okay yes interest on loan government will allow but that also what was the limit 20% so do one thing calculate 20% of your dividend income 20, so 20% of that comes to 20000 and this is maximum maximum means at the most you can minus 20000 that means if you are actually spend less than less but here what is my actual amount 26000 oh this is too much limit means limit you cannot cross the limit and our limit comes to 20% that comes to 20000 so this amount will be restricted look this amount i will cancel and i will restrict to the limit of 20000 20, and if i get deduction of only 20000 then in the outer column what will be the amount yes this oh, i have already written 80000 okay so outer column 1 lakh minus 20 it will come to 80000 okay now why wait first one more thing how did i calculate this uh, 20000 20 yes 20% of dividend income correct and 20% is the maximum limit now tell me maximum means what not more than that what if the amount is less means this amount look at this what if this 
would have been only six thousand. What if this would have been six? Then six thousand only. Then obviously, then government will not say no. Deduct twenty thousand. Why twenty? If I have incurred only six thousand, then means I am saying instead of twenty six thousand, what if this would have been six thousand? Then only six thousand I will minus. Means if it is less, take less. But if it is too much, then stick to the limit of twenty percent. Your purpose they have taken an amount which is higher so that you understand the importance of the limit. So what is the logic of this? That you are not getting any deduction. You are getting only one deduction. That to interest on loan, and that also subject to limit. Maximum twenty percent of dividend income. Why? See, firstly, after listening to this rule, a person would feel happy or feel bad. See, you have to think from yourself. Imagine you are earning the income. You will feel bad or not? You should feel bad because a person would think, "I have earned dividend of one lakh." But I have incurred expenditure of one thousand twenty six thousand. My expenses were twenty seven thousand. But I am not given full deduction. See, if you get full deduction, your income becomes smaller. Smaller the income, smaller the tax. You love to have a smaller income, smaller tax. See, you want to earn more, but for taxation purpose, you want to reduce it as much as possible so that your tax is less. But your government says no. Sorry, we will not allow you to minus this bank charges. Wait, and even this amount you can minus, but maximum twenty percent. There is a limit. Now why? See, there is always a logic behind the law. So what is the logic behind this? Think. i know you will not be able to get the reason but if you have the habit of thinking one day your brain will be developed in such a manner that automatically you will come to know the reasons your mind will be tuned to logical thinking so see what is the logic behind this you know dividend income is income of rich people first agree with this then only i can proceed ahead What did I say? Dividend income is income of rich people or not? Yes. Tell me, does a normal middle class or a lower class person will have dividend income? See, as a student, imagine if you are a middle class person, you heard about dividend income, but actually, who earns dividend income? Rich people. Why rich people? Because dividend comes from shares, and everyone do not have the daring to invest in shares. See, a middle class person has got hardly some income to survive. so he cannot invest his in income in shares because in share market then stock market there is a risk that your money will get lost so that risk appetite normally a middle class person doesn't have only a rich person will think at the most what will happen whatever i invest in shares my money will be lost he can bear the loss because he is rich person so do you agree dividend income is an income of rich people yes that's the reason so government says dividend is usually earned by rich people so let's try to make maximum from rich people and rich people don't bother to pay tax because they have got lot of money so government says you are rich person so you can pay tax why you want this deduction all that no need to give you deduction and don't feel bad you are well to do person you are getting sufficient income at least you can do something for the country do something for the country means pay tax if you also come and say no my dividend income i have got so much expenditure i want to minus i want to minus then this way your income will become small and we want to take maximum tax from rich people okay so that's why government says anyway this is income of a rich people a rich person wouldn't mind if we don't give him deduction and if we tax him on the full amount but see Although we say dividend is the income of rich people, but you know this rich people take huge risk also by taking loan. So that loan is respected. See, if a, imagine if I am a very rich person, so I am you know I am very much confident in investing in share market. I can invest, but you know rich people they also take big risk of taking loans also. 
they take the loan loan also they have the daring to take the loan so they have to respect that daring also when they have the daring they have got the guts to invest in a share market you have to also respect the daring of taking the loan see if he has not taken the loan if he has invested his own money then government will have zero pity then to government will say whatever dividend you earn pay tax on that but if for earning the dividend if you have taken the loan we respect that because although we have in our eyes rich people have got so much income but they take loan also see you calculate 20% of this amount and then this 26 is there to compare and why do we compare because we want to see if the 26000 amount we, what if this is only 6000 then 6000 only you minus see minusing you have to do from 1 lakh don't forget you are minusing from 1 lakh but the question is should i minus full 26 or 20 means full 26000 or 20000 that depends if my 26000 is lower then minus that same amount say 6500 then same amount but our example 26 is too much then i will deduct the limited amount if you want you can make a formula either this limit of 20 percent which in my example comes to 20,000 or the actual amount of the question whichever is lower so that formula will always work so what is lower in my example 26,000 or 20 20 then i will minus 20 and what if this amount was 6,000 not sorry not 26 it was say 600 only then 600 but 600 you will minus from 1 lakh okay so this was about dividend income so see this is example 4 see at the beginning what did i say in the theory of deduction under section 57 there are five points you have to remember first point was a general point any taxable income you find deduct the related expense exempt income ignore the expense winnings also ignore the expense winnings doesn't come from hard work or expense it comes from luck so ignore the expense dividend deduct only one expense sorry dividend and mutual fund income dividend and mutual fund income deduct only one expense that is interest on loan and that to maximum 20% of a dividend income and maximum is not more than that if the actual amount is less than less whichever is less okay this was example 4 then example 5 is something about family pension see if you remember last lecture I said family pension if it is received by an employee sorry if received by the family of an army employee then it is completely exempt under section 10 19 because we respect army people who lose their life in arm, armed forces okay we respect that but imagine if a, if an employee was not working in army okay he was a normal employee and he died and after his death family is getting the pension then also government has got some sympathy and out of sympathy you know what government says whatever family pension that wife might have received after the death of his death of her husband one third of that will be free from tax one third fixed rule of one third reason sympathy what kind of sympathy imagine that poor wife how bad she might be feeling her husband died her husband was not an army employee but whoever he was after the death of husband if the widow wife if she is getting pension anyone anyone would have sympathy so even government is expressing sympathy for all the widows and what sympathy that if the widow gets the pension after the death of her husband she will not be taxed fully she will be given one third deduction because government has to consider what you know that husband died now wife has to run the whole family so she will have more expenses now it will be difficult for her to survive see until the time husband was alive she he was earning and feeding the family but the husband is no more so don't you think the wife will have a tough time so considering that government says don't worry wife if you have got 60,000 
we will free from that 60,000 one third. Find out one third of 60,000. 20, that comes to 20,000. But here also there is a limit. Maximum 15,000 deduction we are ready to give. See, actually government one and they are saying one third is free, one third is free. But then government said, but it should not be more than 15,000. Huh? Because we don't want to free the amount so much. Because if we keep freeing the amounts, when will, how will we get the tax? See, government is little greedy also and little sympathetic also. Sympathy, that's why government is considering to give some deduction. But government says that we don't want to so much get so much emotional that if someone is getting a pension of 6 lakhs. So, one third of 6 lakhs will be 2 lakhs. 2 lakhs will be free from tax? No. We have a limit maximum 15,000. And if someone says why limit? See, everyone has got a budget or capacity. So, government's capacities, I will, we are not going to help more than 15,000. See, for example, there is a poor child. I feel like helping him. But see, I also have my limitation. Even I might be a poor person. So, whatever is my capacity, I feel like donating that child 1 crore. But I have only 10 rupees, so I will give him 10 rupees. So, similarly, government also feels that that wife should be given full sympathy. But then government says we have a limitation. At the most, 15,000 deduction we can give. Because if we give full one third, then some people might be getting 10 lakhs pension also. After the death of the husband. So, 10 lakhs, one third will be too much. So, we don't want to free your amount beyond 15,000. And whenever government puts a limit, automatically becomes a formula whichever is lower. So, here you know what will be the formula look. From 60,000, first you will find one third. That comes to 20,000. And 15,000 is a fixed amount. See, this 15,000 which I have been saying you to buy heart, it is not just a casual amount I am saying. 15,000 is fixed. One third is also fixed. Buy heart it. One third, one third, one third, 15,000, 15,000. There are two things. One third and 15,000. But then one third should be given importance of 15,000. Whichever is lower. You should say whichever is lower. And see, out of 20 and 15,000, what is lower? 15,000. So, what I will do from 60,000, I will deduct 15,000. And in the outer column, I will write 45,000. See, I will show you in a better way. Look here. First, family pension, I will write it in the inner column. Okay. And then, calculate one third of that. See, one third can be any amount. Huh? See, this 20,000, sorry, 60,000 is my example. I hope 60,000 you are not by hatting. This 60,000 can be 6 lakhs, 2 lakhs, 1 lakh, 5 lakh, 40,000, anything it can be. It can be say 30,000 also. Whatever is the amount given in the question, you calculate one third. One third is fixed, look. And this 15,000 is fixed. So these two amounts you have to calculate one third, which in this example comes to 20,000 and 15,000. Out of the two you have to select. Which is lower? See, can you see the symbol of arrow? Yes. See, whenever an arrow goes down, it represents whichever is lower, lower. See, and many times I will use this symbol. Look at this. Arrow going up. So, that means whichever is high. But here it is whichever is high or whichever is less. Whichever is less. And the logic of less is government wants to give as less as possible. Because if government gives you full benefit, government will not get tax. And if government doesn't get tax, how will they run the country? Okay. So, this formula you have to buy at. And you know, this is called standard deduction. In the language of income tax, we call it as standard deduction. See, standard means fixed. See, actually law has standardized. What do you mean by standardized? To fix it. And see what government says. Any wife in this country, if after the death of her husband, if she gets family pension, we have standardized, one third we will deduct or 15,000, whichever is lower, that much will deduct and only the balance amount will be taxable. 
so this is standardized for the whole country okay so that's why it is called standard direction to standardize means to make it as a fixed rule and see once family pension comes in the question they are not going to remind you dear student don't forget that one third huh? they will not tell you in the exam as soon as you look family pension automatically that formula should come to your mind which formula one third of what should one third of actual amount received see the language one third of actual amount received that will be given in the question or 15000 whichever is lower this is a fixed formula you have to use okay but see this is for family pension after the death of normal employee or army employee normal see if army employee dies then the family members get full on sympathy then they don't have to pay tax even if the family members are getting 10 lakhs pension tax free under section 10 19 okay and see it is not necessary that always husband dies and the wife behind gets the pension it can be vice versa also how wife was doing the job and wife suddenly died and after the death of wife husband is getting the pension it can be that way also but see casually i might have said that after the death of husband wife is getting the pension it's not necessary always that husband's death wife is getting the pension it can be vice versa also that wife was doing full job husband husband was house husband husband was house husband cooking food at home and wife was doing job and wife died and after the death of wife the husband is getting the pension the rule is same okay and it's not necessary husband wife any family member gets sometimes a person has died and his wife is also not there his child might be getting the word family means the person who was doing the job died and now the family is getting now family can be obviously mainly it is wife only or it can be a child also when family members get the pension the rule is like this okay so this was fifth point so five points are over so can you tell me the summary summary 1 2 3 4 5 taxable income deduct the expense exempt income ignore the expense wait i'll say in a proper way taxable income deduct all expense all expense exempt income ignore all expense all expense winnings ignore all expense all expense dividend deduct one expense dividend deduct only one expense that is interest on loan to invest in shares and that to limited to maximum 20% of dividend income dividend or units income see this units income units of uti or mutual fund okay and then family pension standard deduction one third or 15000 whichever is lower see in income tax it's all about remembering this thing it is just this is a simple chapter so there is less of remembering and when you go to a bigger chapter there will be more of remembering but you will never find a challenging understanding i guarantee you you will understand everything with concept and logic but i cannot guarantee you that you will remember everything because remembering is more in your hand although it is my in my hand also that's why every lecture i will have the take up but to some extent it is in my hand but majorly it is in your hand to remember and only if you remember everything you can succeed regarding understanding don't worry everything i will make you understand with the logic and concept okay so see read this thing taxable income deduct all expense then exempt income ignore all expense winnings ignore all expense dividend and units income deduct only one expense interest on loan maximum 20% of the dividend income or mutual fund income and lastly family pension standard deduction one third or 15000 which are is lower okay now after this we are left with the theory of gift okay but see before i take up the theory of gift i would like to take one question so that you know you are comfortable with this deduction and whatever last lecture we had learned 
see up till now up till now according to me student has to mainly buy at this thing although the keyword was big d w ramu fakir ji but the remembering item is this only no yeah. that these are exempt in ka which you have to remember so this is first most important thing of the chapter and the second most important thing is this this five points which you have set right now and this knowledge you will use when you know whenever there is expenditure given in the question okay so with the help of this one knowledge let us solve one question and then we can proceed on to gift okay so take out question number question number 2 ready everyone yeah. okay see this is the question read the first line mrs khanna furnishes following details then what is written calculate her taxable, taxable income from other sources so tell me what will be there in the answer see in income tax your answer is always in the form of a statement in accounts what we do you have to prepare some account or the other or say balance sheet sometimes but in income tax it is always a statement which you have to prepare and since it is income from other sources the name of the statement will be statement of income from other sources so your answer will look like this statement of income from other sources there will be one particular column and then one inner column and then outer column this is the format of our answer okay so this will be there now usually see what happens usually student has to read the full question first okay see whether it is accounts or tax whatever normally what we do we read the whole question first but you know here to save the time you know what i will do we will not read the question because you know even after i read the question in the answer you know what i have to do one by one i have to give the effect of all points and there is no format as soon as any point comes in the question i have to give effect in the answer so see first reading the whole sum and that starts solving it will consume our time so to save the time what you are doing you know keep one statement ready like this in your notebook keep one statement ready like this and then one by one we will give the effect of each point in the statement because there is no there is no format for this look there is no particular format for this here you have to prepare the list as per the question so we'll read the question one by one we will give the effect and what is the rule for giving the effect if something is taxable amount if it is exempt dash and if some expenditure comes then you have to minus but then minus the rules of minus you know taxable income deduct the expense exempt income ignore the expense. winnings also ignore the expense dividend deduct only one expense family pension standard deduction so these rules we will follow okay so do one thing so to save the time we will not read the question first keep the statement ready and we will read and simultaneously start solving prepare a statement like this and have the habit of presenting everything very neatly because the better you present the better impact it has got in your memory after all the challenge of every student is what you know you have to remember everything ca is not tough the syllabus is vast and the vastness of the syllabus makes it challenging to remember everything so when the main task is about remembering only use the techniques of remembering the better you make your notes the better you will remember any work you do you have to attach your feelings 
see for example if i have the feeling to care for my students and if i try to teach i can teach better because in my teaching feelings are involved similarly when you are also making your notes when you are solving the sum you have to do it neatly because in that process of neatness you are attaching your feelings and once in your work feelings are attached there comes effectiveness you know i follow one equation work plus feelings is equal to effectiveness but work without feelings has got no effectiveness and for a student feelings means do it neatly nicely and at the home at home when you study everything while you are sleeping just pray your books and sleep that is also attachment of feelings and while praying you have to simply say a hey god please make me pass in the first attempt only with both groups and rank at least you can pray that then whatever is you know destiny that will come automatically are you listening or ignoring me so ready with the statement see uh, there are two columns here uh, rupees column amount column inner column and outer column ready Okay then, let us start one by one. Read the first point. Interest on bank deposit. Now interest income. Try to recall the theory. Tell me what did I explain? Whenever you come across interest income, you should search in GPS. If the interest is from GPS exam, what is the full form of GPS? Gold bonds in a tune, in a tune, in a tune. Gold bonds, POSBA, PPF, Sukanya. Gold bonds, POSBA, PPF, Sukanya. Is it gold bonds, POSBA, PPF, Sukanya? No. Then taxable. And if it is taxable, dash or amount, amount in the direct outer column. So write. See the way I have written. Look here. Show like this. See for a design, you can do this. This is not compulsory, just decoration. This thing which I have done, this asterisk mark, putting a star or a bullet. Yes, you can put numbering also. One, two, three, four, like that. Whatever is comfortable, and even that is not necessary. It is just for your understand. You understand that how many points you written. So my way of pointing out is this asterisk mark. So interest on bank deposit, fourteen thousand directly outer column, because it is fully taxable. Okay, then try second. Agriculture income in China. Oh, China means India or foreign, foreign. So it will be taxable. Okay, and then expenses are given. So today, what were the five points? Taxable income deduct the expense. Exempt income ignore the expense. Winnings ignore the expense. Dividend deduct only one expense. Family pension sign deduction. Keep repeating that. Okay. So this is a normal taxable income deduct the expense. Okay. Tell me the presentation first. You will write agriculture income in the inner column. Then what you will write? Yes. See many students what they do you know they write less exemption. See, when you minus some expense, don't use the word exemption. See, what is the difference between the word exempt and deduction? You know, deduction word is used when there is some expenditure. And when to use the word exempt? If there is some income, it is used for the income. If some income, government says, "Oh, you have got this income, don't pay tax, don't pay tax." When Income is freed from tax. Then we use the word exam. But here, once you see the word expense, don't use the word exemption. Exemption word is restricted for incomes which are not taxed. 
but this is an expenditure so you have to write the word deduction see right now you don't realize this but many students you know casually in longer run what they do they write anything whatever they want and this way marks are deducted so you have to write deduction whenever the word expense see in my notes also i don't think you noticed that thing look here see when i started the lecture today see i had highlighted it expenses so it is only when there are expenses we have to use the word deduction so let us write aggregate income in another column see i have written here aggregate income inner column 1 lakh 45000 you write full here i have written dot 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 means i have not written that in detail in china see regarding wordings you don't take any tension there is no law that you have to write this language that language whatever appears in the question copy that same thing aggregate income in china so copy that 145000 in a column okay then see what i have written less deduction under section 57 less deduction under section 57 wait after that you have to write the name of the expense see after the word deduction under section 50 sir you have to write the name of the expense here they have not given the name of the expense they have just written expenses so you also write expenses but actually look here you have to write the name of the expense like in that example of rent of plant and machine repairs was there so this deduction is the heading below that you write the name of the expense and sometimes there can be two three expense see for agriculture they can give cultivation expense harvesting expense seeds etc they can give five six expense also so you have to make a list like this but here they have given only one thing that also expenses so write like that only like that only so outer column 1 lakh 20000 then next thing in the question rent from letting of a building along with plant and machinery furniture you know feel this words feel this along with you didn't feel the word along with see last lecture i told you whenever building plus other asset you find in combined it becomes a composite rent composite means combined okay but see combined means not any combination huh? what if it was like this rent of plant and machine computer air condition etc etc that is not composite building plus other as see there has to be building then only composite and why the importance of building because building means it's a structure of four wall and a roof which is actually categorized under different head income from house property but in that other assets are mixed so building loses its identity it doesn't go to house property it comes to ifos so see many students what they do whenever they see the group of asset composite composite it's not like that building plus other asset that combination should be there just because there are multiple asset it doesn't mean it will be composite there has to be building plus other asset so you also do one thing you can in, do this thing in your question circle building and along with means plus so this is a sign of composite rent building plus plant and machine furniture and see for rent income in dw ramu what did i say all the rents are fully taxable in our theory there were three rents rent of other asset 
rent from subletting and composite rent. So this is composite rent and it is taxable. Wait, now read properly. Rent from, what do you mean by letting out? Subletting. To let, no. See, if they write the word let out means it is simply to give on rent. But when they write subletting, see when the word sub and then comes letting, then it is a rented thing given for the on rent. But here, have they written the word sub or only letting? Only letting is a general word to give on rent. For example, I have got something which I give on rent. So, give on rent means to let out. See, let means to let, let someone use it. You use it. I will let someone use. But give me my rent. Okay. So, letting is a general word to give on rent. Okay. Yes, if it is subletting, then it is a rented thing. Again, given on rent. Okay. Anyways, that also comes in income from other sources. So, rent from letting of building, blah, blah, blah. Uh, plant and machine, furniture fitted therein. Fitted therein means furniture, plant and machine, everything is fitted inside the building. Okay. And the rent is how much? 20,000. Always check, is it per month or not given as per month? Not given as per month means it is per annum only. It is for the whole year. But then see, depreciation on building, furniture, etc. Insurance premium paid. You know this word paid, depreciation. This gives you the feeling of expense. And whenever expenses come, you should be reminded of those five points of deduction under section 57. Repeat those five points. Taxable income, deduct the expense. Exempt income, ignore the expense. Winnings, ignore the expense. Dividend and mutual fund income, deduct only one expense. Interest on loan, maximum 20% of dividend income or mutual fund income. Family pension, sign deduction. One third or 15 on which is less. So here it is what? Rent is a normal taxable income. And taxable income, deduct the expense. So, can you tell me the presentation? First, you will write the rent of 20,000 in the inner column. Then you will minus. Okay, then you will write deduction under section 57. What what you will minus? Depreciation 6,000 and insurance premium 1,000. Okay. But, yes. See, some students say depreciation is a Non-cash expense. See, it doesn't matter. See, depreciation in accounts you are taught it is non-cash. But actually depreciation also is an expenditure because you incur the cost. And cost of the asset, you have spent money. So see, in accounts you are just taught like depreciation, non-cash, non-cash. But actually even depreciation has involved cash. You calculate depreciation on what? On the cost of the asset. And to incur the cost, you have paid money. So eventually it's an expense. But see, you cannot deduct the full cost of asset. It becomes a capital expenditure. See, rent you are getting one time or year to year. Year to year. But the cost of asset is incurred one time. So from the rent income, which is recurring, which you get one to, sorry, year to year, you cannot deduct the full cost. That's why on the cost we take depreciation. But by way of depreciation, we are deducting some portion of the cost. And cost you cannot say is not in cash. Cost is a cash expenditure. Okay. See, it is just for accounting purpose we casually say depreciation is non-cash, non-cash. Yes, depreciation independently it's a non-cash. But if you see the root of depreciation, depreciation is on the cost. And for cost we have spent money. And when you have spent money, obviously you will want deduction. And in income tax, you always die for deduction. Because if you get deduction, your income becomes smaller. Smaller the income, smaller the tax. Happy feeling. Okay. So depreciation also you can minus. Okay. And even insurance premium. But see, better to write like this. Look, see how I have written. It's better you write the word composite. See, even if you miss the word composite, it's okay. 
but since you know it's a composite ray and it's better you write see actually you can write like this composite ray into building plus other asset i have written the word composite in the bracket but you can start like this only composite ray of building plus other assets composite rent of building plus other assets so that is 20000 inner column you should be careful if it was per month i would have multiplied it by 12 here also they play games sir they gave a date also it was given on rent on 1st november we are preparing this statement for april to march 23 24 what this is a statement of one month or one year and as i told you in the last lecture we always calculate income for Previous year twenty three twenty four. Although in the question this was not mentioned, but for CA inter students of November twenty four, it goes without saying the year will be twenty three twenty four. So tell me if they would have said it was given on rent of on first November, then you will get the rent only from November. Then November, December, Jan, Feb, March. That comes to five months. then if they would have given rent per month so multiply by 5 months see these are basic rules we follow in accounts also i am just reminding you but here don't worry here firstly the 20000 amount was not even per month even if per month did they give when the property was given on rent if nothing is given that means it was given on rent from the beginning of the year so that's why full year income we have earned See, I am just saying what extra can come in the question. Okay, then after this, see with red pen what I have written. See, in exam you don't have to use red pen, but right now I am purposely using red pen for decorating the decorating the notes. Because see, the better your notes, the better is the impact on your preparation. Okay. Otherwise, in exam you have to you cannot use red pen. It's not allowed only. So, less deduction under section fifty-seven. Can you tell me the name of the expense given the question? Depreciation and insurance premium. See my style of writing. Look, I have prepared an arrow. Then depreciation. Then again arrow, insurance premium. Amounts in the inner column. You can just write depreciation. Not necessary to write to. Not necessary to write the whole statement. depreciation on this 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 that you just have to write the name of the expense then insurance premium yes see some students have a doubt that instead of writing minus sign can we put bracket yes you can do see these are very normal rules which we do in accounts in tax also to represent minus amount you can put it in bracket also that is also okay okay so this or rent then done that thing next point we have done 1 2 3 then fourth point dividend from indian company see this indian company foreign company doesn't make any difference huh? sometimes they also give dividend from cooperative society once it is dividend income it is taxable but wait expenses are given now what is the rule for expenses in dividend income deduct all expense or only one only one that is interest on loan is this interest on loan no if someone says sir can't we assume how can you assume expenses means it can be anything 
only if they write interest on loan then it is interest on loan but this is just an expense so ignore it you have to ignore the expense so what to do with dividend the full amount of 14000 will go to outer column fully taxable okay see how i have done here see whenever you ignore something it is better you have to write a note in the exam now in the exam after the statement you can write a note expenses related to dividend are ignored but you know if you feel a burden some to write a note after the whole statement is done you can write in the bracket also expenses are ignored in bracket you can write this way you can avoid the hassle of writing a note okay then tell me what if this was interest on loan this 500 rupees i am keeping it 500 only huh? and with this was interest on loan so calculate the limit first 14020 percent comes to 2800 so 2800 is maximum which you can minus but my expense is only 500 then i will minus 500 only from 14000 okay means 20 percent is the limit and that's the higher limit if the actual expense is less then you will take the lower amount only whichever is lower okay but anyways that is if it would have been interest on loan then what about next point winnings, winnings from raise for winnings what is the rule what to do with expense ignore. deduct the expense or ignore the expense ignore ignore because winnings does it come from hard work or mere luck mere, mere luck there is no hard work there is no spending people keep spending but they are not lucky they will never win so winnings comes not from spending it comes from luck so this spending has got no connection ignore it so directly you will write the amount of winnings in outer column see 40000 then next rent from land see in our keyword of dw ramu fakir there were three rents rent of other asset rent from subletting composite rent so this is rent from other asset see other asset means other than house and house means four wall and a roof but this is an open land see once they say land it is an open land and open land means there are no four walls no roof so it is not house it is other assets and rent of other assets is taxable okay see what if they would have given rent of house then you should write rent of house property is not taxable under the head ifos it will be taxable under income from house property you have to write a note for that below the statement means then don't include that rent here see if rent of house if you include here that means you are including it in income from other sources that would be wrong so if by chance they give you rent of house then you will not include it in the statement you will write a note below the statement and in the note what statement you have to give because it is a rent of house it is not considered in the above statement it will be considered in a separate statement statement of income from house property if that would have been house rent but this is house rent or some other asset other has so this will come in income from other sources and it is taxable also okay so write the amount tell me what if this was an agriculture land exempt. then it is exempt if you remember last lecture i told you whether you do farming in agriculture land 
or you give it on rent if agricultural land you are having the income there from is exam some people themselves do the farming some people give it on rent but if it is an agricultural land it will be exam but it should be in india so his doubt is what what if this was an agricultural land then i would have said exam under section 101 regarding india foreign if the problem is silent we can assume in india but this is not agricultural land this is a normal land so it will be taxable okay so rent of land 40000 then next point family pension after the death of wait there is some printing mistake it's not his husband question is of mrs khanna mrs khanna will say his or her 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 husband after the death of her husband who had been a member of armed force army employee dying and family getting pension it is fully exam under section 10 19 but then today i gave you the formula 1/3 or 15000 that formula you use when it is a normal employee dying and family member getting pension this is a normal employee dying or army person so it is completely exam you will not even write the amount you will put a dash directly in the outer column this 48000 instead of that you will put directly dash and what is the section See, you can write a full statement also as it is appearing in the question. I have written in short. Family pension after the death of her husband, who was member of armed forces. You can write as it is. Tell me if this was not member of armed force then. then wait what was the amount nahi what was the amount in the question 48000 that i would have written in the inner column then 1 upon 3 into 48000 that comes to 16000 compare with 15000 is a fixed amount out of the two which is lower 15000 and this 15000 you would have deducted from 48000 this way you would have done okay but that is if normal employee dies and family pension is given then next point come on fast next amount received from lic on maturity life policy who takes life insurance the one who is worried about death and death will remind you of d that will remind you of 10 10 d exam under 10 10 d see some sir nothing it is all about remembering see let me tell you wait wait take a hold for some time see in accounts even after the theory is taught you are curious in solving the sum because you will find some good points in the question in accounts fm costing but in taxation sums are just following the rules if you know the rules you will not find any variety in the question yes sometimes you have question is framed in dangerous manner but there will be no novelty because you have already studied the rules and my strategy will be what you know while i am explaining the rules i will explain so thoroughly and i will make sure you buy heart it so that in the sums you will not find anything new see you sum solve thousand questions of income from other sources you will not find anything new provided the theory is thorough okay so here for example you know life insurance policy exam under section 10 and d that's already taught so nothing new in the sum you will find in short in tax once theory is done the topic is in our control
see how written amount column amount of dash dash it is fully exempt under section 10 10d anything else in the question that's it all the points are done so now you can total up you have to total the outer column total up on your own don't see my total taxable income from other sources see for this question my answer is done but can you tell me what do you do with this amount in real life please tell me this is the most you say not paying attention what do you do with this amount at the end yeah, this where where tell me exactly where do you transfer it where this you will transfer here where here so what was the answer we got 2 lakhs so this comes here and this way five weights are computed okay but right now you are not able to calculate this because these chapters will be taught separately for each head of income there is a separate chapter but once you got this 2 lakh 31 this way you will learn this also one fine day and then after you total up there is something called deduction even that will be taught separately in one topic and then on this amount you have to calculate tax at some percentage and that percentage will also be taught in one topic and that much amount you have to pay to government and having the knowledge of income tax itself you will feel proud always because this knowledge everyone requires okay so question 2 we have done okay now we can start the theory of gift Okay, look at this now. Look, see, gift. If you receive from an employer, employer means your boss where you are doing the job, then it will be categorized as income from salary. Because see, whatever your boss gives you, it is because you are doing good service in the job, and because of your performance in the job, your boss getting happy giving you anything. It's part and parcel of income from salary. Okay. and then if you get gift from your customers then it is income from business okay so for example a businessman he is getting gifts from his customer and why customers are gifting him because businessman is giving good service to the customer and customers are happy so sometimes customer might give gift to the businessman but that will come under which head income, income from business i hope you are familiar with this word head yes. five heads of income so this will go to which head income from salary this will go to which head income from business but that is if it is from employer or customer but if you receive some other gift other means what other than your boss other than your customer like you get gift from your friends relatives etc then it is income from other sources and in income from other so there is a rule if you get a gift up to 50000 it is tax free but if you get above 50000 say 51000 it is fully taxable entire amount it's not like that that if it is 51 i will minus 50 and balance 1000 no entire 51000 will be taxable once the amount crosses 50000 full amount will be taxable this is little unusual Means if it is fifty thousand or less, then exam above fifty thousand taxable. But now see next question: What you should get? Why? So see, first I will explain 
a big concept that why gift is being taxed. Here, you know, firstly, a person should revolt. Why tax on gift? Gift is not an income. Tax is on income. But gift is not an income. Do you agree? In, we are studying income tax. And income tax is the tax on income. But gift is actually not an income. Then why it is taxed? But first, let me prove that gift is not an income. See, be focused, be focused. First, I will make you explain that gift is not an income. It should not be taxed only. But then I will prove, see, if it is not an income, then why government is taxing? So, let us first discuss why gift is not an income. See, that 50,000 rule you can remember, that is, by hunting is not a big thing. But understanding the concept is important. Tell me, why did I say gift is not an income? You know, income word has come from what? Earnings. Don't we say, I am earning the income, earning. And you know, when you call something as earning, when there is some give and take. If you give something and in return take something, you can say, I have earned it. Like for example, income from salary. Why salary is an income? Because there is give and take. What give and take? As an employee, you give your services, you perform job. So there is some give. And then in return you get salary. And only when there is some give and take, we, we say, I have earned it. See, receiving and earning are different. See, receiving, someone gives the money, I have received it. But that is not my earning. Earning, when do you say it's my earning? When I put my efforts, my hard work, then if I get something, I can say it is my earning. And only earnings become your income. In short, to call something as income, there should be give and take. And you will notice, every income there is give and take. Let us check all five weights, okay? In salary, there is give and take or not. Employees does job, he gives his service, then he takes salary. Then house property, income from house property, what do you give? You give your house to someone. So there is something give and then you take rent. So there is give and take. So give and take is the important element to call something as income. Okay, now check. What are the five heads? What are the third head? Income from business. Like I am also doing business over here. So am I getting the fees free of cost? Or I am giving something? I am giving. I am giving services to my student. I am teaching. I am shouting. I am using my energy. I am giving. And then if I get the fees, it is my income. In fact, we call it my earning. I have earned it. Because I put my efforts. Then... I am making you check all heads. Income from salary, house property, business, then capital gains. In capital gains, what happens? You sell the asset, you make profit. So when you sell the asset, you give away your asset. For example, I have got some gold or shares. I give it to someone. So there is some give. And in return, I charge the price. So there is give and take. Everywhere there is give and take. Even in income from others. So D. W. Ramu Fakir. Dividend income you get when you invest in shares. So for every income there is something give and take. But gift is totally free. And if something is free, there is no give and take. There is only take and take. Tell me if someone gives me gift. So gift has freely come. The person who has given me the gift, he might be loving me. But whatever he gave me the gift, did I give something? No. So there is no give. It is only take. So technically speaking, gift is not an, not an income. See, this conceptual understanding is must. Many students don't bother. They simply buy at the rules. Uh, gift, 50,000 exam. Above 50,000 taxable. But that is a mechanical approach. First you have to argue, gift is not an income. Why the hell tax on that? So do you agree it's not an income? So, what is the definition of income? Is it something free or give and take? Give and take. Give and take. But gift is not give and take. It is totally free. You have received many gifts in life. But when you get the gift, it is totally free of cost. 
you are not given something so technically it is not my earning it is not my income it should not be taxed only but then the doubt should come why then government is taxing gift also but see government is also taxing when if the gift is above 50000 but then why so see gift technically it should not be taxed but you know people used to do cheating in past people used to do cheating can you guess what kind of cheating exactly what cheating people used to do whenever a person used to have some income he used to say this is a gift and in older days gift was not treated as income it was not taxed only so to avoid the tax what people used to say even some income is earned you used to claim this is not income this is a gift for my friend i have got very good friends this actually he doesn't want to pay tax actually it is his income for example i am getting fees of 50 lakhs from my students but what i can say this is just a gift from my friend my friend loves me a lot he gave me 50 lakhs but actually it is my income in the form of fees from students so you know people used to do cheating what they used to do whenever they wanted to avoid evade tax on some income what they used to say even if it would have been income they used to claim this is a gift so this type of cheating used to happen and when this cheating happened a lot government was frustrated and what government said to hell with your gift now now we will tax gift also every income we see you say it is gift and we are getting fooled so now we will tax gift also because we don't believe in gift because every income you show it as a gift only see this is very easy to cheat see for example i am getting some rent income also i have given house to someone on rent i am getting rent income every month i am getting rent of 1 lakh 2 lakhs but i will say i am getting gift my friend is so loving every month he gives me gift but don't you think every month someone gives gift is not believable so this used to happen but you know government couldn't do anything that time so that's why out of frustration what government said now gift is also assumed to be your income although technically it is not an income but we will assume gift as your income also because in the name of gift you are doing lot of cheating and tax evasion but you know then government said if it is a genuine gift then we will exempt you so see there are certain genuine gifts there are certain genuine gifts which government believes yes this is a genuine gift then they are exempt can you see here there is one keyword okay chalo even if it is not a genuine gift if it is some other gift up to 50000 government is ready to believe it's a gift but if you say someone gave me a gift of 20 lakhs who gives you gift tell me have you got any of your friend who is ready to give you 20 lakhs gift okay i can have a friend who can give me a gift of 20000 also up till 50000 government is ready to believe also but for an amount of 25 lakhs if you say no i got gift unbelievable that's why it is fully taxable see these things which are exempt these are believable see here why fully exempt you know because in this full form if i tell you you will find even if someone has got 1 crore rupees it is genuine i will tell you the full form that's why here it is fully exempt but other gifts are not so genuine but then also what government says you know nowadays there are friends also who are so loving friends also give gift of 40 50000 so up till 50000 we are ready to believe but only up to 50000 okay see how that 50000 measured i'll tell you but up till 50000 government is ready to believe actually government doesn't believe this also but people can argue you don't know i have got loving friends you might not be having good friends i have got nice friends they give me gift so argument will start that's why government say okay not to argue up till 50000 we will believe it's a gift 
and if it is a genuinely gift government doesn't want to tax technically gift is not in income also and government is not greedy to tax gift also it is just people used to do cheating in the name of gift nice incomes also they used to say it is an it is a gift so to catch the cheating government had to make the rule but then government will believe only 50000 gift believable then government will also say, why 5 crores my father had so much after his dad i got 5 crores so it is believed then in i there are two things inheritance and will will sometimes a person has died and he has made a will that after my death 20 lakh should go to my son 50 crores should go to my friend so out of will also if you have received something then even if it is in crores it is believable because will and inheritance cannot be cheated inheritance means it is someone's death if someone's death is there it can be proved and will is also written document so these are believable gifts in short see in all the points in this keyword of i am dr lc you will find these gifts are genuinely believable so government will not tax and if someone say but sir even if it is 20 crores government is not greedy government say let it be 20 crores actually we don't want tax on gift because technically gift is not an income see these gifts government is taxing why because there are cheaters who try to claim even an income as a gift so that's why to slap them we have started this more than 50000 tax but if something is genuine we don't want to tax it so i for inheritance and will m stands for marriage if on marriage you received gift of 25 lakhs government is not surprised indian marriages it is possible that on marriage also you get gifts of crores sometimes you get in the form of dowry see dowry is also kind of a gift only for example a person has got married and his father in law mother in law in the form of dowry they have gone crores of rupees so that dowry is kind of a gift only but in indian custom it is very common to give on marriages so if you want to avoid tax you can always say this i got on marriage for ex means you can do planning for example i have got income of 5 crores from it is actually an income huh? but i can say i got as a gift on marriage but that cheating is possible only in the year of marriage after marriage happens only once in lifetime see with the help of marriage you can do cheating but how many years will yes at least in the year when you you got married every income you say this was on marriage this was on marriage this was on marriage for example i get married in this year so in this year whatever income i have got i can always lie what this also i got on marriage this also there were many uh, visitors on my marriage there were many attendees on my marriage they give me so much gift so you can do cheating but see can't help you know there are many cheating techniques see even though the law tries to make the law full proof but there are always a loopholes loopholes mean there are some leakages where people can find the area of cheating but this cheating will not work every year every year you cannot say i got married i got married how many times you are getting married a marriage can happen only once so at least in that year you can say even if some good income was there you can say it was a gift on marriage so this is m m for marriage then d stands for death contemplation death contemplation death contemplation means someone is expecting death he has not died for example a person is in hospital he is counting his last breath doctors have given the answer that you are going to die within two or three days or maybe he is on ventilator means he is on the last stage so imagine that person is on his last stage and at that time he has you know he has left all the greed and everything because he knows he is going to die now so at such time if he gives gift of 20 lakhs 50 crores to someone 
it is exam because even that gift is believable and it happens in real life imagine mukesh ambani is such a rich person now suddenly if he comes on last stages of his life he is in hospital hardly some few days are left so at that time if he gives a gift of 1 crore 2 crore someone it is believable because a person who is dying he has left all the greed okay see at till the time we are alive you know we are crazy and you know money minded i don't want to give my money to anyone i don't want to give my money to anyone but when you are dying you feel like giving so such gifts are believable so this is called death contemplation tell me what is the difference between this i and the d inheritance is after death see inheritance and will happens when after death someone has died and after death you got something but here is it after death or before death before, before death. death in contemplation of death in contemplation means in expectation of death and sometimes you know your days have come because you have got such a big disease like cancer this etc that within some days you are going to die so this gift is not after death it is before death in contemplation of death contemplating death means expecting death okay then i for inheritance will will m for marriage wait i'll show you the full form one by one i for inheritance as well as will i have not written will but will is also there then marriage gift then death contemplation yes your doubt now oh, see wait his doubt is what you know this marriage gift inheritance which i am talking about these are what kind of gift are they monetary or some property so see that point will come later when i come to this part but since he has raised the doubt let me clear that whether you gives get some money as gift or property as gift the law is same see income tax doesn't say that for income you should get some cash only income doesn't mean it should be always cash it can mean kind also so see in this whole theory whether you get gift as money or in the form of some property the rule is same rule is same means if it is if it is from this list completely exempt otherwise up to 50000 exempt above 50000 See, see what I read. Fully, fully means if it is fifty-one, full fifty-one taxable. Now, whether it is cash or it can be gold also. Sometimes you get some gold. Means, for example, I say my friend has given me gold of seventy thousand. Oh, friend has given gold of seventy thousand. Forget gold, seventy thousand. That means it is more than fifty thousand. It will be taxed. So, see, gift can take any form. It can be in the form of money. or a property or anything the rule is same so if you are thinking on that line sir is talking about gift but is it cash or something it can be anything it can be cash bank transfer property gold silver anything the rule remains same okay but if it is as per this transaction then completely exempt so see we have reached till i m d next alphabet is r are for gift from relatives if you get gift from relatives then it is believable see if i say someone my friend gave me 20 lakhs gift it <laughs> can you cannot believe but if i say my father gave me gift my brother gave me my sister she loves me a lot then it can be believed or not yes. so if it is a gift from relative it is believable and the gift which government believes government is exempting it fully but the question is what do you mean by relative relative means what uncle aunty cousin brother real brother what son daughter father in law mother in law chacha mama what is relative so that definition will come after some time right now let me complete this full form first then i will explain that who comes under relative but see the word relative has to be defined because only if someone is my relative the gift will be genuine exempt 
and if gift is from non relative then it will come in other gift then depending upon 50000 we will decide the taxability okay so what is relative i will tell you let me complete this first i am doctor is over l stands for gift from local authority what do you mean by local authority municipality municipal authorities do you know there are three types of government central government state government local government but we don't say local government we say local authority that is nothing but municipality municipal authorities so that is in short local authority means it's a local government see government for the whole country is central government and for maharashtra state state government and for mumbai city it is local authority municipal authority okay So tell me why a local authority will give gift? See here, what I'm saying, you know, if someone gets a gift from municipal authority, gets a gift from local authority, it is free from tax. But then doubt will come, sir. We have heard gifts on marriage, we have heard gift from relatives, but gift from local authority, how come it is possible? It is possible, especially when there are some natural calamities. imagine there was heavy rain in rainy season if there is heavy rain and many people's house got destroyed due to heavy rains if many poor people their houses their some areas their houses get destroyed then in such cases in such case of calamities municipal authorities give them money and they give money free of cost so it is kind of a gift see they might not be calling this as gift they might call it as an compensation but in the eyes of law anything you get free anything you get free it's a gift so from municipal authority gift is possible when especially when people have suffered because see being municipal authority they have to take care of the local area local authority means what they are caretaker of the local area so in the local area for example in mumbai remember it once there was heavy flood in mumbai yes. and many people houses got destroyed okay so in such cases municipal authority gave them gift okay so such gifts are exempt because these are genuine because the municipal authority if they have given gift to someone it is genuinely needed otherwise why will municipality give gift to someone if they have given gift to someone that means definitely it might be due to some natural calamity some people some poor people have suffered destruction for that they have given gift so it's believable it's genuine see every point you have to convince yourself what yes it is a genuine gift and only if it is a genuine gift we are convinced with fully exam okay see a student has a doubt that sir this municipal authority the example which you gave that there are heavy rains municipal authority gave the money but sir that is actually compensation see technical word for that is compensation but here you have to understand anything which you got for free it's a gift actually law doesn't use the word gift also law says anything received without consideration anything received without consideration is a gift without consideration means you are not given anything means you got freely something so whether it's a compensation or gift the bottom line is you got it free or not that's it so anything for free is a gift so you also open up your mind don't stick to a narrow thinking that gift means it should be occasion types functions see that is a narrow approach in the eyes of law gift means anything you got free it's not necessary it should be at the time of some occasion or function also like local authority has not given on some functions or occasion rather they have given at the time of some calamities natural calamity earthquake flood okay so this is not an occasion but see whether it is an occasion function or calamity you are getting some money free free money is a gift
and all free monies are treated as per this chart. Okay. So then see next. C stands for gift from a charitable trust. Tell me, if I say I got 50 lakhs from a charitable trust, is it believable or not? Believable. Because charitable trust, their nature is to do charity only. Charitable trust, they are born for war, to do charity. And charity means they keep giving poor people. For example, if I say I got 5 lakhs to do MBA from a trust. So whether it is for doing MBA, whatever. If a charitable trust has given, it's believable. See, if I say my friend has given 20 lakhs, who has got such friends? Who? What kind of friends are this? It's not believed. But if a trust has given, it is a job of the trust to do charity. So it is believed. And vice versa also. Look, if someone has given to charitable trust, then, it, then for trust it becomes gift. But that is also exam. Because see, being a charitable trust, there are many donations they get. Yes. For example, now imagine I am a trust and Mukesh Ambani gave 1 crore. So, will you doubt, will you have suspicion? No, no, this is not. It is believable. Because trusts, they get donations. And for them, donations is like a gift only. Now you say, no sir, this is do donation is for free or not. Anything you get for free, it's like a gift. So, in short, see, in case of charitable trust, whether trust receives or trust gives, both the transactions are exempt. Only thing is, when trust receives, it becomes gift of the trust. And when some normal person gets from trust, it is income of the normal person. But in any case, it is exempt. So, best way to remember is, gift from or to a charitable trust. Both are exempt. To and fro. To and fro. So, next was charitable trust. Now, see, last C stands for COVID. COVID, COVID. How can you forget COVID, that dangerous disease? So, see, on account of COVID, imagine if someone has got COVID. And for his treatment, he has got gift. Gift means some sponsorship, some money. That is also exam. For example, I got COVID and I don't have money for my treatment only. Someone gave me 23 lakhs rupees. My friend only. See, normally if I say my friend gave me, it's not believed. No friend gives so much of gift, okay? Then definitely it is your income. You want to evade tax, okay? But if I say it was COVID... So, at the time of COVID, everyone used to help each other. Then on COVID, if you got something free, it is believable. But who should be suffering from COVID, you know? The assessee. Assessee means what, you know? The person whose income you are computing. For example, see, today I took question of Mrs. Khanna. So, Mrs. Khanna becomes the assessee. Assessee means the taxpayer. You know, this word I have used for the first time, but in the language of income tax, the word assessee is very common. So, whenever I say assessee, means the person whose income I am computing. So, tell me, let us take the example of this question only. Either Mrs. Khanna should have got COVID or her family members. Who should be suffering from COVID? Mrs. Khanna. Either Mrs. Khanna or her family member. Now, family member means what? Spouse. Spouse means the life partner. So, for Mrs. Khanna, it can be Mr. Khanna. Spouse, children, parents, wait, sorry, spouse, children, dependent parent, dependent brother, dependent sister. If for their treatment, someone has given money for COVID treatment, it is exam. So, tell me, if Mrs. Kanna says, I got 20 lakhs from my friend because some of my friend was suffering from COVID. See, who should suffer from COVID? Either a family. or his family member. Or family member is defined here. So, who will come in the family of 
मिसिस खन्ना स्पाउस स्पाउस मीन्स फॉर अ मिसिस खन्ना इट विल मिस्टर खन्ना स्पाउस चिल्ड्रन डिपेंडेंट पेरेंट्स ब्रदर्स सिस्टर इफ दीज पीपल आर सफरिंग फ्रॉम कोविड एंड इफ एनी वन एज गिवन टेन लैक्स ट्वेंटी लैक्स एनी अमाउंट इट विल बी टैक्स फ्री ओके बिकॉज सी एट दी टाइम ऑफ कोविड सो ऑल दो इट हेज बिकम अ ओल्ड डिजीज नाउ बट यू कैन नॉट फॉरगेट पीपल हैव लिटरली स्पेंट लैक्स एंड लैक्स ऑन कोविड ट्रीटमेंट on oxygen this that you know people are literally spend and many people were not having money to spend so they got someone to give the money so that is a free of cost money but such free of cost gift will be exam because it is covid which is very genuine case but you know this point of covid will not come in exam now because covid has become now old disease still there are covid patients coming up you might have read the newspaper but not so common okay and even if someone has got covid they can manage with their own money but today also if i say no i got covid and i didn't have money for my treatment my friend gave me exempt but who should get covid either myself or my spouse children dependent parents dependent parents brother sister means what you know parents brother sister should not have their own income you know when you call someone is dependent if they are not earning right now you are studying i am talking about you people you people are studying you are not earning income you are dependent on your parents so tell me if i get for my treatment exam if i get for the treatment of my spouse exam children exam and here dependent independent doesn't matter because spouse and children are my core family spouse my wife my part of life and my children they are my core family your dependent independent doesn't matter but when it comes to my parents brothers sister only if they are dependent on me and someone has given money for their covid treatment it will be exempt that means if my parents brothers sister are independent having their own income and if for their treatment someone has given the money it will be taxable no parents means not the in laws see for me parents means not my in laws my parents means what my father and mother not my in laws in laws we call respect them as father mother but then after all they are not my father mother they are my in laws okay so here when i say parents it's not father in law or mother in law it's my mother and father who gave me birth okay so tell me it should be whose treatment repeat either assess his own treatment see assess him means you understand na say for example if you are calculating my income so shirish vyas will become the assess and in this question we are calculating income of mrs kanna to so mrs kanna is the assess and similarly look here mr saxena so he is the assess assess means the person whose income we are being computing who is being assessed okay so it should be whose treatment assess his treatment spouse children and in spouse and children doesn't matter dependent independent but parents brother sister should be dependent and if you get the money for the treatment it is exempt but you should get that money for these people treatment only if you get for someone else's treatment then it will be taxable but see there are two points in covid covid treatment covid death see in covid times you might have noticed some people get help in treatment some people get help in death see help in treatment why do you need help in treatment because treatment cost requires lot of expense in hospital but why someone gets money on death sympathetic grounds for example for example i was an employee i was working in some company and suddenly due to covid death occurred so my boss will feel sympathy for my family so my family member will get some money so that is also exam but if death happens on covid exam only up to 10 lakhs because law things practically if someone has died there is no scope of saving now 
the one who has died has died it is just sympathy has left so that's why only up to 10 lakhs but if it is treatment then there is no limit of 10 lakhs because treatment means there is a scope a person can get alive so even if you get a gift of crores it is exam the expenditure doesn't go in crores i'm just saying for the sake of example that if someone's treatment is going on then there is no limit of 10 lakhs you heard 10 lakhs i said right now 10 lakhs limit is there when if death occurred in covid so for example here mrs khanna mrs khanna died mrs khanna died and her family member received up to 10 lakhs exam see if it is covid death the amount received should be up to 10 lakhs and no one gives about 10 lakhs firstly but law says up to 10 lakhs if someone is getting it will be exam but that is if it is death but if it is treatment any amount no limit see i have written here look read covid treatment see treatment can be of self also and family also but death death that assess himself has died then who will get the money family see here assess is alive so it can be assess is treatment or family treatment but here i have not written self wife why because assess has died see whose death has taken by assess is death so in my dad question it was mrs khanna mrs khanna died in covid and then on her death family is getting and family means who should get Spouse, children, dependent, parents, brother, sister. Family has got this definition over here. See, I have written here. What is this? Spouse, children, dependent, parents, brothers, and sister. Okay. So, see, in C, there were two COVID points COVID treatment, COVID death. COVID treatment, COVID death. COVID treatment, no limit. Covid death, there is a limit up to 10 lakhs and in Covid treatment, it is a treatment means no one has died. So it can be my treatment also, family's treatment also, anyone. But in Covid death, I have died. So who receives the money? Family member. But if they receive up to 10 lakhs, it will be exam. But you know, I have got a gut feeling this point will not come in question of today's time. Because now Covid, we have just gone away from that. Okay. But still in the law. Which law I am teaching you? Income tax act. It is still written in the law. But in the question, this point has got less likeliness. Okay. So what is the full form of I am Dr. LC repeat? Inheritance, Inheritance or will. Please buy it. Huh? Inheritance or will. M for marriage. Death D for death contemplation. R for relatives. L Local authority, gift from local authority. Not necessary, it can be a compensation, but anything free from local authority. Then, first she was charitable trust. Whether from charitable trust you receive or a charitable receive, trust receive from someone. To and from both. Then, last she was COVID. COVID treatment, COVID death. COVID treatment, no limit. See, you should think logically. If there is treatment going on, there is a scope of revival. A person can survive. So, government also feels, give him money, crores, 10 crores, we will exempt. So, COVID treatment, no limit. But COVID death, up to 10 lakhs, if the family member gets, it will be exempt. Okay. See, these gifts are treated as fully genuine. That's why fully exempt. Wait, here, what was R? Relatives. Now, relatives means what? See. There is a tree over here. Can you see one tree? Yes. This is a family tree. Anyone who is sitting in this tree is your relative. And if you get gift from these people, take it. Take it, it will be tax free. So, relative means what? Now, can you guess the full form what I have written? See, now imagine this is me. Individual means a person. 
लुक एट मी इमेजिन आई एम युअर दिस इज शिरीश व्यास नॉट टेल मी हू विल बी माय रिलेटिव माय स्पाउस स्पाउस मीन्स अ लाइफ पार्टनर मीन्स माय वाइफ देन ब्रदर्स ऑफ माय स्पाउस सिस्टर्स ऑफ माय स्पाउस माय ब्रदर्स माय सिस्टर्स ओके एंड अलॉन्ग विथ देअर स्पाउसेस अलॉन्ग विथ देअर लाइफ पार्टनर्स प्लस हू एल्स माय फादर मदर विथ देअर ब्रदर्स एंड सिस्टर अलॉन्ग विथ देअर लाइफ पार्टनर्स सो टेल मी if i talk from my father's point of view this is brother of my father which we call it as uncle but in hindi we call chacha and chacha's life partner will become chachi so chachi is also here okay but in english whether it is chacha or mama everyone is uncle okay but if you notice paternal and maternal both the uncles are gone. paternal means from father side maternal means from the mother side and see i have put father and mother in the box so whether it is brothers and sister of father or mother they are my relatives and not just alone brother sister with their spouse see in this tree no one is sitting alone everyone is sitting with their life partner so for example if you see my brother see this is me so this is my brother so my brother is not alone he is there with his life partner and this is my sister she is not alone she is there with her life partner and this is my life partner and who is this brother of my spouse and that brother which we call it as brother in law in hindi we call him mera sala hai so this is my sali sali means brother in law's wife okay and this is sister in law and sister in law along with their spouse okay then who is this father and mother of my spouse but if you think from my point of view they are my father in law mother in law in hindi we say saas sasur saas and sasur or we can say father in law mother in law but did you notice my father in law mother in law are without brothers and sister means they have brother sister <laughs> but in the definition relative they are not counted because you know they become far now see this is my personal father mother my personal father mother will be with brothers and sister both but this these are my these are my personal father mother or in laws so that itself is sufficient i don't want their brothers and sister they become a relative of far far nature in fact they are not relative in the eyes of law see this definition important because only if you get gift from these people you can say it's a gift from relative it is exam and you should feel happy that relatives definition is broad there are many people covered here and law says you claim gift from any of these people we are ready to exam because see this family bond is so natural there is a love and affection see although these are not my personal father mother but you know there is there is some love with my father in law also so if my father in law gives me gift it sounds natural so see these brother sister they are not my personal brother sister they are brother sister or spouse but then in indian family we develop so close bond that love and affection comes so the gift sounds natural okay but up till now my brother in law has never given me the gift but in uh, he has given me gift of small amount up to small amount it is always exam but if he gives me gift of some big amount 1 crore still it will be exam okay so i keep telling him give me gift it is tax free for me tell me now what is left in the drawing la la means lineal ascendant see how do i spell it lineal ascendant see lineal means in my line ascendant means above me 
Ascend means to go upward, upward, upward. So tell me who is above me? My father, mother. And above my father, mother? My grandfather, grandmother. Above them? Great grandfather, grandmother, great grandmother. And above them, they are all called lineal ascendant. Lineal, you know why do you say lineal means you have to see your line. For example, here we are solving question of Mrs. Khanna. So in Mrs. Khanna's line, if you go, so who will come in her line? Mrs. Khanna's father, mother, and their father, mother, and their father, mother, and their father, mother, that whole line. But whose line? Khanna's line. So see, here it is. This is in my line, ascendant. And in my wife's line also, ascend. They are my relatives. So tell me what about my wife's grandfather, grandmother? They are here. See, my wife is sitting here in the tree. Can you see? And this is grandfather of my wife. They are also my relative. And not just grandfather, even grandmother. And not just grandfather, grandmother. Great grandfather, grandmother also. See, when I say ascendant means in the line, whoever comes above. So can you guess what should be this? Lineal descendant. See, descend means to go down. And lineal means in your line. But tell me, down who is below me? My children. In my family line, who is below me? My children. And children of my children. And children of my children of my children and so on. See, law doesn't say only your son and daughter. Why? If my son and daughter, son and daughter are also there. Their son and daughter also. And their son and son, daughter, son and son, daughter also. Everyone is my relative. If they are alive in this life. For example, in my case, I just have son and daughter. But later, I might have grandson, granddaughter, great-grandson, great-granddaughter. They are all my relative. Now, can you tell me why this is a common line? Obviously, this will be a common line. Children and come. Where did children come from? It is due to me and my wife. It is a common line. But the line above is common or different. So that's why, see, I have drawn thoughtfully. It is not a random drawing. See, when it was going upward, my line is different because my mummy, papa, they are different. And her mummy, papa, they are different. Okay. But children, will I say my and her? It is our. Our means it is a common line. See, best is if you remember with this drawing, it will become very simple. See, if you see in the law, they have given this in very horrible manner. This same thing is given in the Income Tax Act in statement form. Imagine if this comes in a sentence form, it becomes so horrible. But that whole sentence form paragraph, I have converted into a drawing. And with this drawing, with this drawing, it becomes very simple to remember. Actually, you know, you should once, once practice to draw. Means you should do like this. This is me. Okay. And then you should write, this is my spouse, my life partner. And then, my see actually it's like this, me, my life partner, my brother, sister, her brother, sister, my father, mother, with brother, sister, her father, mother, alone, father, mother. Then my lineal ascendant, her lineal ascendant, our lineal descendant. Feel the action. How did I do? Repeat. Me, my wife, okay, or spouse, okay. Wife doesn't suit. If it is a male, then wife. If it is a female, then husband. Okay. So in my case, it is me, my wife, my brother, sister, her brother, sister, my father, mother, with brother, sister, her father, mother, without brother, sister, my LA, her LA, our LD. LD means lineal descendant. And everyone is with spouse. Okay. If you can see this in red. I have written spouse, 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 spouse. Spouse, spouse, spouse. Even if it is my children, they are along with their life partner. Okay. Now, what to do with this? If you get gift from these people, it is a gift from relative and it will be fully exam. Okay. Now, see here. After this, tell me, other than I am Dr. LC, 
what is the treatment of other gifts see other gifts government actually doesn't believe but then if government directly taxes it people will feel bad for example pe person can argue you might not having be you might not be having good friends but i have good friends they give me gift so government says okay all friendly gifts are also treated as genuine but only up to 50000 but if it goes beyond 50 even if it is 51000 fully taxable okay okay now see here still the theory is not over you think that the theory is over look here now see this other things where we follow the rule of 50000 this will go more in detail now not so much but this will go more in detail then only you can say theory of gift is over means gift theory is still going on okay so i will continue with this part now look see the same drawing i have drawn it again you want to see it is same or not check 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 employer customer other i am dr lc okay check the same thing i have drawn here employer customer others this is i am dr lc in c there are two c's one is belong to charitable trust other is related to covid okay and then others you know this i have reduced in size because this i have taught now now i want to elaborate other, other gifts now see other gifts can take three forms sometimes you get gift in the form of money sometimes you get gift in the form of movable property movable means a property which can move gold silver shares some something which can move and sometimes you get gift in the form of immovable property like house a land something which is not movable now see depending upon what you got the rule will differ little bit see broadly the rule is up to 50000 exam above 50000 fully taxable that remains the same but still there is a doubt coming in your mind you know why this three classification i'll tell you look firstly this money gift is simple for money gift what is the rule if i get gift in money and if it is up to 50000 and see this 50000 per day per month or per annum per year throughout the year even if 10 people have given me the gift i have to aggregate all total how much i got during the year if it is up to 50 1000 exam so tell me if i got gift of 5000 rupees from 20 people everyone gave me 5000 5000 5000 5000 5000 for the how many people gave me 20. 20 people let it be 20 let 1000 people give the person who got is the same person so you have to aggregate all the amounts so tell me if 5000 rupees is given by 20 people so per person 5000 so into 20 1 lakh so in all i got 1 lakh taxable see it is not per person it is from all person taken together how much you got see otherwise it would it would have been like then i would have said i got gift of 40000 from mr x a different friend then 40000 from another gift a different friend 40000 from another gift from different friend see in a businessman you got different customer every customer actually is selling the goods and making income but you will say no they are giving me gift so for my stud for me students are my customers so if a students given me ca inter fees of 60000 i will say he gave me gift of 60 he gave me his gift of let's assume fees is 40000 every fees of 40000 40000 40000 i will say all are gift so it is not per person it is from all people taken together how much you got okay so even the question they say gift from mr sarita mr sunita mr resh miss mr ne sorry miss 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 sarita miss sunita miss reshma miss zaiyar and all and the total of that if comes to 50000 of the whole year then exam if it is above 50000 even if it is just 1 rupee above taxable you know in such case what you should do 
if someone is giving you gift of fifty one thousand, you say I respect your gift, but give me only fifty. Take your one thousand back, because instead of fifty, if he is giving you fifty one, it will become fully taxable. And many times the tax is thirty percent. till now i have not explained you the percentage of tax but just for example if you take 30% tax imagine if someone gives you 51000 gift so 30% of that will go in tax only so it's better you request him please don't give me gift of 51000 give me 50 give me 49000 but don't give me above 50 yes if he is ready to give you 50 lakhs then it's a different thing then we can pay the tax okay so what is this aggregate aggregate means what you have to total of all the people giving you gift together for the whole year for the whole year from all the people taken together up to 50000 exam about that it will be taxable okay now in movable property it is the same but you have to add the fair market value what is fmv fair market value for example he gave me a gold she gave me gold he gave me gold she gave me gold many people are give me gold so i will add all the golds combined but what i will add market value for example he gave me gold of 5 grams so i will have to find out the market value of 5 grams gold she gave me gold of 2 grams So I will find the market value that this way I have to add up all the market value and if the total is up to fifty thousand exam above fifty thousand taxable fully taxable. It is just if it is money you have to simply add the money, but if it is a movable property we have to add the market value of that item. Now whether it is gold or silver anything okay, but see in movable property look. Sometimes you purchase gold at a low price. Even that is counted as gift. Relax. What did I say? Sometimes you purchase some gold, silver, etc., anything at a lower price. That also becomes a gift. See, I'll tell you how. Imagine I purchase a gold of forty thousand. Means its market value is forty thousand. But I had to pay only five thousand. For a gold having value of forty thousand, if I have to pay only five thousand, so what is the difference? Thirty-five thousand becomes a gift from me because it came free of cost. See, for forty thousand, I should pay a cost of forty. But if I pay five thousand for an item having value of forty, so five thousand I paid. But the difference of thirty five thousand is also a gift for me. Even government consider this as a gift. Actually, it's a transaction of purchase of gold. I will say I have purchased the gold. It was not a gift, but you purchase the gold of forty thousand. But how much you paid? Only five. So for a gold of forty thousand, ideally you should be paying forty, but you paid only five thousand. So we will treat the difference as your gift. So what is the difference? Oh, thirty-five thousand is less than fifty. Then it's okay. But tell me now, it is like this. I had purchased a gold of one lakh. For that, I paid only ten thousand. So what is the benefit which I am getting? See, you have to calculate the benefit amount. So for a gold of one lakh, see, gold is just an example. Huh? Don't buy hard gold. It can be any movable property. Just for the sake of example. So tell me, if a gold of one lakh market value, I am paying only ten thousand. So what benefit I got? Ninety thousand, which is exceeding fifty thousand taxable. See, if something is free, the whole value becomes taxable. If something is not free, you have paid some price, difference becomes taxable. So there are two possibilities: either no price or low price. Did you hear what did I say? Either no price or low price. No price means someone gave me the gold. Wow, no price, total free. Then the full market value. 
बट समाइम इट इज नॉट नो प्राइस इट इज लो प्राइस मीन्स यू पेड देन यू टू सी द डिफरेंस सी दिस इज वॉट यू विल फाइंड लुक यूर रीड सी वॉट इज दिस नो प्राइस आई हैव जूम टू मेक यू सी लो प्राइस Okay, so tell me, if it is for no price, then then the full market value will be seen. Tell me, why I have to write aggregate FMV? Because there might be ten people. One has given me gold, one has given me silver, one has given me diamond, other has given me shares. Aggregate. See, don't forget in this whole topic when we are measuring that fifty thousand, is it fifty thousand from one person? or all people combined all people combined in the whole year see it might happen that in jan month i got some gave then august then september you have to add the total of the whole year from all the people combined that is why i am mentioning the word aggregate so aggregate fair market value if it is up to 50000 then exam and if it is above 50000 then taxable Tell me here what I have written. Aggregate of difference. Tell me in this example what did I say? I got one lakh gold. Market value one lakh, but I have paid only ten thousand. So how did you get ninety thousand? One lakh minus ten. So one lakh is FMV. Ten thousand is actual price. That is what I have written. See, I hope you understand how did this formula come. FMV is that one lakh like in my example, and actual price is ten thousand which I paid, and obviously difference is my gift. If someone says no, full one lakh is okay. Why one lakh? For one lakh, I have paid at least ten thousand, so remove ten. So difference is treated as my benefit, and only on difference I have to pay the tax. But here also why I written aggregate? All people together. For example, he gave me gold of ten thousand. For three thousand, gold of ten thousand gave me for three thousand. So difference is seven. But then she also gave me gold of twenty thousand for a price of four thousand twenty and sixteen. So this way there are so many people. I have to add all. But in every transaction I will add the difference. But see in aggregation, all the free gifts are to be kept separate. and low price items you have to keep separate means what i repeat while aggregating all no price items you have to keep different and low price item you have to keep different okay so if you understood answer tell me of thing he give me he gave me gold of 45000 completely free completely free okay Forty five. Remember, they are forty on completely free. She gave me gold of seventy thousand at five thousand. Sorry, not five thousand. Say thirty thousand. Seventy thousand gold I paid thirty. So this is a transaction of low price, and the previous transaction was for no price. Will you combine or keep separate? Separate. And if you see separately, so in my first transaction, he gave me gold completely free, forty-five. So it is less than fifty exam. And her transaction should be kept separate because it is no price or low price. No price. That's what I meant to say. And some other person gave me money. That also you keep different. See, aggregation of money, aggregation of no price movable property. an aggregation low price movable should be kept separate so answer three people gave me money three people gave me gold free of cost three people gave me gold at a lower price so will i add all no so what to do three people who gave me money combined and three people who gave me free gold combined and three people who gave me gold for a lower price combined that three combination will become and if all combination are coming below 50 exempt so in short never aggregate this with this 
in the question this transaction should be kept different and this transaction should be kept different and money gift should also be kept different that you can i see money gift how to find out they will write money or cash or check money and or gpay if someone gives me gift through gpay it's money only all that is money and if it is movable property they will write gold silver shares etc etc and if it is no price they will say free of cost if it is low price it is at a lower price they will say he purchased a gold of 1 lakh for rupees 10000 then it is a transaction of low price okay then last thing remaining immovable property okay now see in immovable property also you will find no price low price exam give me example of both you imagine the example if you are not saying at least you think see no price means totally free means i got one house free means some of my friend give me you want this bungalow take it it's yours we don't have such friend but just for example and why i have to take example of friend only because see, if it is relative and all it will come in i am dr lc see this other gifts are all weird gifts these are not marriage relatives all the genuine gifts are kept aside in i am dr lc okay so imagine my friend gave me a bungalow free of cost so i have to see if it is above 50000 it will be above 50000 so it will be taxable but if i get a bungalow whose value is 5 crores and if i get at a lower price then it becomes a low price transaction so see here also there is no price and low price but you know here we don't do aggregation here you have to see per property for example he gave me a bungalow having a value of 50000 only she also gave me a bungalow having a value of 50000 only so if you combine it will become 1 lakh but you cannot combine here it is per property and you know immovable property are so costly items that individual property only it will become above 50000 see my example also sounded so funny i said he gave me a bungalow 50000 bungalow for 50000 but just for example then she also gave me a bungalow 50000 so will you aggregate no in immovable property law doesn't ask you to aggregate you have to keep it per property so per property it is 50 50 both are exempt so if it is a movable property you have to aggregate because see movable property like gold and silver silver can come for 2000 also silver coin you don't buy on diwali etc silver coin can come for 2000 also so they are not that valuable thing so you have to aggregate all movable items but if it is immovable property means what it is house bungalow land so they individually are so valuable that we will see per property there you don't have to do aggregation so if a question comes very funny that i got a gift of land of 40000 only from one person then another person gave me one more land of 40000 so will you combine no both 40 you will keep separate and both are 40 means below 50 exam but practically it is not possible a land having a value of only 40000 okay they always go in crores okay but the point is look what are written here see read what are written here what is sdv i will explain but per property you have to see per property okay now see sdv means stamp duty value which is nothing but the market value only but you know whenever it is immovable property we call market value as stamp duty value stamp duty value why because whenever there are immovable property you know there is some stamp duty levied on that 
for example today if i purchase flat or sell flat so you know state government not central huh? state. state government levy stamp duty and they levy stamp duty on the prevailing market value so since stamp duty is levied on a market value so such market value is called stamp duty value so see you don't think stamp duty value is a new concept it is as good as fair market value but whenever we talk about houses land we don't say market value instead we use stamp duty value it is just a difference in the spelling feeling wise meaning wise it is market value only please don't think it's something different out of the different world only so this is as good as market value so in the question they will say stamp duty value was 40000 30000 means up to 50 then exam and if it is above 50 fully taxable but you will see per property see i have highlighted here per property you have to see per property okay now see here what is remaining last year last thing is remaining low price now can you give me an example for low price first you create an example see low price means you are not getting totally free you are paying some price but less price see if you pay full price then it is not a gift if an item having value of 1 lakh you pay full 1 lakh then there can be no element of gift element of gift comes when when you paid lesser price the difference becomes your benefit so in hindi we say difference is your maza and on maza there is saza maza means benefit saza means tax but when do you get that maza benefit when you pay low price so can you create an example of low price over here no no this is immobile property you you are getting see if you get totally free some house then it is no price low price means i am buying a flat but the flat has a market value of 20 lakhs but i had to pay only 2 lakhs so what is the difference a flat had a value of 20 lakhs i paid only 2 lakhs so difference of 80 lakhs is my benefit so that difference you have to check it is about 50000 so it will be taxable but now comes the climax in immovable property you have to check two criteria 50000 also and 10% see sometimes even if the difference is more than 50000 still it is not taxed like for example look here i am buying a land listen to the example carefully i am buying a land which is having a value of 50 crores so tell me if i buy a land of 50 crores don't you think i will do bargaining yes. or you are so rich that oh 50 crores take it even a rich person does bargaining yes. here i am talking about a purchase of land so imagine i am buying a land of 50 crores so by little bit of bargaining negotiation if i make it a deal of 50 crores as say for example 49 crores so what is the difference if you see difference of 1 crore the difference seems to be more than 50000 but this is normal bargaining if i am buying an item of 50 crores little bit of negotiation if i make it 49 so that difference is not it should not come in the eyes of government this is normal bargaining but if you stick to 50000 you will feel oh difference of 1 crore it is above 50000 so government will tax but don't you think it will be unfair yes because this is normal bargaining if you are buying a land of 50 crores little bit negotiation you will do and if that 50 crores ka deal you make it at 49 crores it is very natural you know in such case what you should see if the difference is not more than 10% it is a natural bargaining then government will not tax you what did i say if the difference is not more than 10% 10% of what you know actual price which you are paying so tell me no no my 
आई एम बाइंग लैंड ऑफ फिफ्टी क्रोस दैट इज अ मार्केट वैल्यू एंड बार्गेनिंग बार्गेनिंग आई पेड ओनली फोर्टी नाइन क्रोस यू टू फाइंड टेन परसेंट ऑफ फोर्टी नाइन क्रोस सो फोर्टी नाइन क्रोस टेन परसेंट ऑफ मच फोर पॉइंट नाइन सो अपटिल फोर पॉइंट नाइन क्रोस डिफरेंस इज ऑल्सो नॉर्मल मीन्स इट विल नॉट बी टैक्सड बिकॉज सी इमोबल प्रॉपर्टी मीन्स द प्राइस आर इन क्रोर्स and when the property is pricing in crores little bit bargaining will automatically create some difference and that difference will always be above 50000 so tell me if i am going for a purchase of 50 crores property that seller will also have some shame to bargain will he say oh i'll reduce 2000 rupees for you <laughs> transaction of 50 crores there if i request do something less do something less Will he do less of only two thousand? No. At least you have to respect the value of the transaction. Mm. So he will give some discount. See, normally, any person who expects some discount, we have the tendency of giving ten percent discount. So up till ten percent difference. See, you are not gone to somewhere and uh, request her for discount. Give some discount. Give some discount. So ten percent discount sounds very normal. Mm. So the transaction is of fifty crores. But ten ten percent don't calculate of fifty crores, huh? In the law, they have written ten percent of your actual price. Fifty crores in my example is stamp duty value, which is as good as market value. In short, year fifty thousand is not important. Ten percent is important. In fact, both are important. See, for the timing, you will have to keep some patience. See. First, I will see the difference between STV and actual price. First, you have to see how much benefit you are getting. So, in my example, fifty crores was the stamp duty value, and I did bargaining, bargaining, and I had a deal of forty nine. So, forty nine crores is actual price. So, difference is one crore. Now, this one crore you have to compare with fifty thousand also, and ten percent, and then you have to see which one is higher. Calculate and tell me what what comes to ten percent four point nine crore. Now four point nine and fifty in that two what is higher four point nine. And now see is our difference up to four point nine? Yes, our difference was just one crore, so it's below four point nine. Exam. See, I know this will not go easily. I will have to give two three example. I have kept ready for you. Don't worry. See, try this. I will give you one technique to solve. It will become very simple procedural. See, see. I will give you one ex two examples here, and then I will make one format only for you. I have kept everything ready. I know it is not that easy that you can rush and move ahead. Try this. First, what do you mean by this example? Example one. What do you mean by this? What is seventy six lakhs? What is the full form of STV stamp duty value? What is the meaning of that market value? So imagine I am purchasing a land. Okay, the land's market value is seventy six lakhs, and obviously such a costly property I am buying. First thing practically, will I bargain or not? Yes. So I request it. Please do something less. Please do something less. So he did less, and the final deal was at. Seven lakhs, seventy lakhs. So what is the difference? This in Hindi we call we got maza. Maza means benefit. Maza is a Hindi word. In English we can say this is the benefit we got. Now you have to compare. Is this maza small or big? If it is big, taxable. If it is small, exam. How to decide this is small benefit or big benefit? Now you have to put one formula here. Either fifty thousand. See that fifty thousand is perpetual in this gift theory, and ten percent of actual price. What is ten percent actual price? This is the actual price. Ten percent comes to how much? Seven lakhs. Now between these two figures, you have to take whichever is higher. Between what, fifty thousand and ten percent amount, whichever is high. 
सो वॉट कम्स टू आई दिस वन नाउ कंपेयर विद दिस Is our benefit small or big? Small. Small. Six lakhs is smaller than seven. Exam. Means make one technique. See if you directly try to do it with your mind, it will become tough. Best strategy is first see. See government is targeting on what the difference. So first find out the difference. Okay, difference means. Which you can call it as benefit. Tell me why I am calling this a benefit. Obviously, if a property has a value of seventy-six lakhs, I have to pay only seventy. Yes, feel, feel. For a property of seventy-six, I have to pay seventy only. So how much I saved? So it's a benefit. But if this benefit is small, government will think, okay, this is a natural bargaining. Little bit bargaining will create a difference. and every time there is a difference we should not tax it would be not fair so this is little bit or big big what for that you have to see the formula and see i have shown the formula here look 10% of actual comes to 7 lakhs and this you have to always compare with 50000 and then within this two you have to select which one the one which is higher okay So one which is higher is seven lakhs. So now see, once you choose seven lakhs, this fifty thousand all is scrapped. Now you have got seven lakhs on one hand, and the difference of six lakhs. So our maza is small or big? Small. It is small because six lakhs is small. So since the benefit is small, it will be exempt. So look conclusion. Look at the conclusion. Exempt. Okay. Now try other one. How to do? First, what do you mean by this example? Four lakh eighty thousand is what? Stamp duty value means what? It is the market value. Means the fair market price is four lakh eighty thousand. But when I purchase the property, I negotiated, I did bargaining. Everyone does bargaining, you know. Okay. So after doing bargaining, you settle the deal at four lakh forty thousand. Actually, the transaction you are understand is for its purchase of immobile property. Don't forget what we are studying. And why I am saying purchase? Because see, if it is no price, then it is free. But if it is low price, means you are paying some price. And the property is coming, you are paying price. It's a purchase transaction. See, in the question they will write purchase. See this thing. How in the question they will write? Purchase of a property for four lakh forty, which had a stamp duty value of four lakh eighty. The question will be framed in the form of purchase. So tell me, what is the maza you got? Maza means I hope you are maza means the benefit forty thousand. Now you have to compare if it is a small maza, small benefit in exam. If it is big, then taxable. But how to decide small and big? Compare this with our formula, okay. And if this amount is smaller, then exempt. Bigger than taxable. Now tell me what is our formula? I had the formula. Ten percent of actual price or fifty thousand, whichever is higher. See, after some time, what mess you will do? You will do whichever is lower. It is whichever is higher, okay? Because in immobile property transaction. Difference can be more than fifty also higher higher, okay? Because the transaction itself is in crores, so little big bargaining can also create a difference in crores, okay? So tell me what is the amount? Ten percent comes to how much? See again a blunder which people do is ten percent on what actual? These students forget. So here ten percent of four lakh forty is how much? Forty-four thousand. Compare this with fifty thousand, and select whichever is higher. So forty-four and fifty. What is higher? Compare our maza. So the benefit which we are getting is less than fifty thousand or more. Less. Then it is small benefit exam. Okay, tell me what if I change the figure? 
what if i am making one change huh? what if this was 495000 so sdb 495 actual price i am keeping same 44000 so now what is the difference 55000 so now i am getting a benefit of now find out 10% comes to how much still it is 44 because 10% we are taking on actual and i didn't change the actual price did you notice in my new example i changed the stamp duty value so 44 and 50 thousand compare with that what is higher now compared to 50 thousand our 55 was greater now this is a small benefit or big benefit fully taxable yes entire 55000 will be taxable means in our statement of income from other source in the outer column 55000 will go in the outer column okay see now if i make any changes once you know the method let me change any figure see best i have made a formula only for this I mean, this is the best to explain the students. See, I tell my students, the students first write the stamp duty value, then see the actual price, then find out the difference. Difference in Hindi we call it as maza. In English, if you want, you can call it as benefit. And then compare this with the formula of ten percent of actual price or fifty thousand, whichever is higher. See, this arrow means. And then if this This difference is less than or equal to also, huh? then exam. Can you see less than equal to? I have written here. Yes. And if this figure is greater than our formula figure, then it will be taxable. Best is to remember this thing. But you know this headache is in case of immovable property only, and that too if it is a low price. See here. See everything is smooth if it was still here only. This is little complicated. Complicated in the sense you have to be little careful. And once you go as per this trick, as per this technique, definitely your answer will come. Okay. Okay. Try this example just for my satisfaction. In the question they are given like this: He purchased a land at rupees eighty lakhs. At rupees eighty lakhs, stamp duty value was ninety three lakhs. Ninety three lakhs. We, we, let me do together. Help me here also. What did I say? Purchase a land at eighty lakhs. Stamp duty value was ninety three lakhs. Do you agree? This will be given in the question. This will be. This has to be given. Now, what do you do? Find out the difference. Difference is thirty lakhs. This you can do. Then on right hand side, apply our formula. Ten percent comes to how much? Ten percent actual that comes to eight lakhs. Compare with fifty thousand. What is high? Eight lakhs. Now see, we got benefit of. 13 lakhs is it a small benefit no. which government will say exam exam no. no 13 lakhs is a big amount you do compare with 8 lakhs see this is a greater than sign you understand or not yes this is greater than so because the benefit is greater than see it will be taxable that full 13 lakhs will become taxable see this is a full proof formula anything comes in the question this will always give you right answer okay see now complete chart is done everything is completely done read from the top just recap fast gift can you see this thing if you get gift from employer then it is not recorded in income from other sources it is recorded in income from salary statement then if you get gift from customer it is not recorded in income from other source 
it is recorded in income from business okay but if it is some other gift then welcome to ifos but how to welcome depends upon if it is i am dr lc just write in the statement put a dash let it be 2 crores 10 crores any amount put a dash if it is i am dr lc inheritance of will marriage death contemplation relative local authority charitable trust to and from both covid treatment covid death covid treatment any amount covid death up to 10 lakhs covid treatment for myself family both covid death for family to so myself died to so family only okay but up to 10 lakhs so if i am dr lc completely except except in that covid death it is up to 10 lakhs only okay and other gifts other means what other than i am dr lc okay so here you know actually you can make five categories how you know one two three four five means there are five things how gift of money one thing then gift of movable property for no price completely free that is second see why i am keeping separate because aggregation is to be done separately then third is gift of movable property at a lower price means you are buying something but you paid less price or difference okay then gift of immovable property for no price and then gift of immovable property at a lower price tell me where to do the aggregation here it is per property here here everywhere it is per property here we don't do aggregation every person gift from this person keep it gift from this person keep it different it's per property per transaction but here it is per or combined combined but all free of cost properties are to be combined separate and all low price properties are to be combined separate and money is again to be combined separate and everywhere the rule is 50000 exam above 50 the fully taxable except here here we have to compare 50000 and 10% both which are is higher and then we see if the difference is less than exam less than or equal to greater than then taxable see although our time is up but please bear with me this theory is such that immediately if your question is solved you feel confident i could have left the lecture also but then this theory is so sensitive especially this part at the end and the one which was saying look aggregation so if it is practically solved once you know you will feel confident otherwise whatever i taught will go waste okay so please bear with me just one sum and then i will leave the lecture okay and see it ca level you have to increase your capacities and capacity is all a state of mind see if your state of mind is so negative i cannot sit for more than 1 hour i need some break then your life will be like that only but if your mental state is like this i can sit for 24 hours i know no super human can do that but your mentality should be like that a robot can do but human being cannot sit non stop for 24 hours but your mentality should be i can sit for 24 hours that should be your mentality even i get tired non stop speaking you know that tea person the tea vendor came he also felt pity let me give some tea to sir because i am speaking since long time but i will not have breakless breathless non stop stamina capacity increase limitless that should be your mentality okay so we'll do one good question right now which will cover all these points okay question number 11 won't take much time okay
do one thing keep the statement ready because see our style is what we will go in the order of the sum one by one we will give the effect of all items okay so keep the statement ready see my statement is already ready Prepare two amount columns, inner column and outer column. Actually, see, I have written the short form, but it's better you write the full form. Huh? Income from other sources. Although this short form is very popular, by chance in the exam also, if you write, they won't deduct the marks. But in exam, you can. Follow shortcut because you have got crisis or to complete the paper on time. But right now, at least you write neatly. Statement of income from other sources. Ready with the statement? Okay, now. First, I'll do one thing. Just have a glance over the question. All the points are gift only. We are not reading in detail. Just see orally. See first point. Can you see cash gift? Don't go in detail. Gift. I am just verifying. All the points on gift, so that mentally you can think in lines of gift. Okay. Second points: two plot of land gifted. Okay, gift. Then he purchased a house. See, purchase transaction also becomes gift if you purchase at low price. See here also it is like this only. Stamp duty value seven fifty, but you are purchasing at. Six lakhs. So you are purchasing at low price. Then just read broadly. We'll discuss in detail. Then he purchased land from Mrs. Ayer. See, purchase transaction can also become gift. It is at low price. So see, is it low price or not? Stamp duty value this much, but you have paid only nine lakhs. Then sculpture, jewelry. Sculpture means you understand or not? But you say in Hindi, murti, murti, that statue kind of thing, statue, sculpture. Fifty thousand, thirty-five thousand, and this is completely free gifted. Okay. Then silver coin purchased. See, we can do one thing. I'll do one thing. I'll write something. You also write. First point is what? Wait. I actually I mean to ask this thing. Wait, wait. I want to ask this thing. You tell me. What is money gift? What is movable property low price? Sorry, no price. And what is movable property low price? What is immovable property no price? And what is immovable property low price? It's better we first decide and keep so that we can solve easily. Okay. So tell me one by one. First transaction is what cash gift is money gift. So we'll do one thing. I will write here. You also write. money gift okay then two plots plots is movable property or immovable plot is a land it is immovable so it is immovable property was it is it totally free or at low price free no price see here it is written gifted which it is for no price so i am just writing in short ip means immovable property no price Then next one is purchase a house. House is immovable property. And have you paid full price or less price? Less price. So it is immovable property. Low price. I P in bracket low. Then 
he purchased a land again this is a purchase at low price so land is again immobile property so it is immobile property low price then <coughs> sculpture jewelry 50000 35000 gifted gifted means it is totally free no price see whenever it is low price the sentence will start in the form of purchase because when you pay some price so it's a purchase transaction although low price but it's a purchase transaction so here it is movable property wait what will i write movable property no price and the last point here it is a silver coin silver coin is something movable and shares are also there are shares and these are purchased at low price now tell me what is the rule for aggregation see firstly in immobile property we don't aggregate we treat all transactions separate it's per transaction we have to check so see firstly this immobile property all three transaction we will analyze separately you are never do aggregation you sure not have written here per property. property you don't do aggregation okay so first immobile property part is clear now what is left in the question a uh, money you have to aggregate all the monies whatever money gifts you find in the question see it is possible that here you have money gift and in the last point also you might have money gift you have to combine that this is plus sign see money gift if you find you have to aggregate whether that money gift point is there in the first point or last point anywhere in the sum all monies you have to add but we have saw the question in our question money gift is only in first point but tell me by chance in the last point also if there was money gift then i would have aggregated because all money is you have to add 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 and see if it is up to 50 exam because see if you keep this money gift different and in the last point also there is money gift if you keep different your answer will go wrong so in the whole question whatever money 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 add but here we have got only one money gift so this remain separate okay then this will anyways remain separate okay now tell me movable property what is the rule for aggregation all no price no price no price aggregate and low price separate aggregation so this will be separate this will be separate can i add this and this together no this is no price and this is low price so luckily they are in different point only so we'll analyze differently okay so now we can start so first point is money tell me what to do read the sentence cash gift received by him from a and z 32000 each aggregate see a also gave money z also gave money if in the question later on also if there is money add that also so you should check is there any money further in any point no so add this 32 32 64 oh my god it's above 50000 taxable fully taxable is 32 each so 32 plus 32 64 so this will be taxable means dash or amount amount so see here see how i written gift of money see money can be cash check gp ptm whether given in the first point of the question or mid of the question or end of the question you have to aggregate 
all money but in aggregation of money don't mix movable properties huh? see basically in this statement you have to write the name of the income see someone had a doubt right now sir should we write this statement full see basically statement is of income so we have to write the name of the income properly so if you can write the name of the income is short it's well and good but if you think no i am not able to use such kind of brain then copy this as it is see you can copy this as it is see regarding wordings you don't have any tension see i have less space in my ipad because i want to write as big as possible so that it is visible to the students if i write the same sentence here you know i will have to use small handwriting and it will become congested so for better visibility i am writing in short but if you want you write the same sentence what is the sentence cash is received by him from a and z write as it is you can write as it is don't worry about that but i have written in short because i have my own reasons so that i want to show the presentation as good as possible and it is not wrong in writing this is a gift of money done then our next point is immovable property see in immovable property anyways we don't do aggregation so i don't have to worry next point is again of immovable property next point let it be every point is individual because i said it's per property and in immovable property you know tension arises when if it is at low price we got that 10% thing also you have to check but this is tension point or simple point simple this is no price then you have to simply see 50000 read two plots of land gifted to him by b and c whose values are 350 and 50 down respectively will you add or you will see per property per property so first plot is about 50 taxable second is exactly 50 exam so this will become taxable this will become exam so we can pass two different entries in one entry what should be the wordings please make wording gift of land from b then second entry gift of land from c amounts gift of land from b 350 taxable then gift of land from c dash because it is exact 50 and did you see i am not aggregating it is kept separate because immobile property it's per property see if this sum i i would not have taken that whole uh, explanation would have gone waste so this sum was must actually this sum i have created in such a manner that concept which is taught to you it can be easily implemented okay so right here see i have passed two entries can you see gift of plot from b gift of plot from c see b is plot i have written the amount because it is exceeding 50000 so it will be fully taxable okay but c has given us he has given us a small plot the value is exactly 50 and up to 50 it is exam that's why dash but see when you put dash in bracket you have to write see what i have written here look read exam because sdv is up to 50000 and see this section this is the section of the whole theory look here look wait this whole chart which i explained it is section 56 to 10 okay I mean there is no section 10 involved here section 56 to 10 has given all this detail provisions if you see in the original act it is given so lengthy but i have done same thing in the chart form in one small chart everything is covered but if you see in the original act it goes into pages 
and that also you will not be able to understand what is it see you are getting all ready made charts and everything you have to simply study otherwise see in the act it is not given like this this cnc even this relative chart everything is given in so horrible manner see if you are inquisitive to know how all this is given in the income tax act any time you can go in google you can put a search income tax act 1961 that act will come and then put section what there they have a column of section put this section section 56 and then see what is given you will go mad and that time you will value thank god sir is there see why i have to say because many students they feel this is the way it is given in the law only don't give credit to the law give credit to me because see you don't give credit but at least don't give wrong credit to someone in the law it is not given in simplified manner if you see in the google the original law it is given in very horrible then done we have done second point now third point okay second. second is done okay now third he purchased residential, residential house at 6 lakhs from d or stamp duty value 7 lakh 50 see first you should understand the meaning of the sentence did you understand the meaning of this there is a house whose value is 7 lakh 50 but we have paid only feel the benefit only 6 lakhs so we got a benefit of 1 lakh 50 now this 1 lakh 50 you have to compare with the formula i will do one thing i will show that formula here only substitute the figures in this question what is the stamp duty value 7 lakh 50 and what is the actual 6 lakhs and what is the difference 1 lakh 50000 compare with our formula formula is what 10% comes to 60000 and 50000 is a fixed amount so 60 and 50 what is high Sixty thousand. Now compare the benefit. Are we getting small benefit or big benefit? See this greater than sign and greater than means taxable. So this will be taxable, okay? But see this kind of presentation we will have to show. I'll tell you how I to show. Look here. See, firstly, what is the sentence? Purchase of residential house. See, I have written little short form, but you are right, full. Purchase of residential house from D. And this working you have to show. Copy from here. see that difference of 1 lakh 50 you should feel this is my benefit when you get a property at a lower price that's a benefit and benefit is kind of your income see you feel happy when you get income or benefit so even benefit government is taxing that and it is becoming taxable because the difference is greater than our formula see this is standard working you have to show whenever immovable property low price comes okay now see for done done that thing done this thing now see for practice you will find one more such point point 4 he purchased land from mrs ayer At seven lakhs, 
एच डी वी नाइन फोर्टी फाइव अगेन इट इज लो प्राइस सो हाउ विल यू डू द वर्किंग एच डी वी नाइन फोर्टी फाइव एक्चुअल नाइन लैक्स डिफरेंस फोर्टी फाइव दाउन ओके देन फॉर्मुला इज टेन परसेंट कम्स टू नाइंटी थाउजेंड एंड फिफ्टी थाउन इज अ फिक्स अमाउंट दोनों आउट ऑफ द टू विच आर इज हायर वॉट इज हाई नाइंटी थाउजेंड एंड दिस इज स्मॉल सो अवर बेनिफिट इज नॉट डेट बिग स्मॉल सी यर वी कैन से लिटल बिट बार्गेनिंग गेव अ सम डिफरेंस and when you buy big big property you have the tendency of doing negotiation bargaining so because of that you might have got a difference but that's exempt so show the presentation in the same manner see i have shown here look here but see here in the outer column it is put dash because it is becoming exempt purchase of land from mrs ayer this working is compulsory to show purchase of land at the most you can write at low price see sentence you have to write as purchase of land only see still if you want you can write the he was suggesting can we write this uh, benefit of uh, benefit in purchase of land if you want you can write benefit in purchase of land you can write that see i told you there is no hard and fast rule regarding this wordings okay if you don't want to apply more brains copy the same sentence but don't write he because statement is of this mr sharma only by the way who is mr sharma called you know assessi the person whose income we compute is assessi the tax payer okay obviously don't write he but you can write purchase land from mrs ayer at low price so regarding wording so don't worry much any suggestion you have i my answer is yes okay but it should be a proper english have you put dash here okay yes. then point number 4 tell me can point 4 look and 5 be aggregated Sorry, sorry, by mistake. Can point five and six be combined? No, because here it is no price, and here low price, and all the movable property is got for no price, and for low price you have to keep separate. Okay, yes, all no price is combined, all low price is combined, but their combination will be separate. So try this: a sculpture and jewelry worth fifty thousand. And thirty-five thousand were gifted by E and F. Should I keep separate or aggregate? Aggregate. See, this is also no price. This is also no price. Both are no price. And all the no prices. Aggregate. See, in immovable property, we see separately per property, each property. But this is not immovable. See, sculpture. It is a statue kind of thing, sculpted by a sculptor. And jewelry, these are movable property. So movable property, you have to merge. Yes, obviously, I will not merge the last point because last point is movable for low price, and all low prices you have to aggregate separately. See, best is you know this scene should be fixed in your mind. See, 
this is one separate set this is a different set this is a different set here anyways we go property wise this way you should view means what all monies combined separately all no price movable property combined separately all low price movable property combined separately any immovable property any way we go per property per property okay so tell me now what to do this you will combine so combine and see how much it is 50 plus 35 it is 85 it has crossed 50000 taxable fully taxable full 85 okay okay tell me how will you write gift of see if it is low price you can write purchase or if it is free gift there are two things only either no price or low price no price you can write gift of and if it is low price purchase of blah 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 so here it is no price so write gift of what sculptor and jewelry there is one sir you see gift of movable property sculptor and sculpture and jewelry when you add it is called aggregate see in the notes i had shown you or not aggregate fmv we have to see the aggregate fmv is above 50 thousand that's why fully taxable up to 50 exam but above 50 fully taxable see in this chapter up till now we have come across three limits three amounts minor child 1500 per child interest on post office savings bank account 3500 but there the amounts are such that up till that amount exam balance that excess amount will be taxable but this was the third amount 50000 here it is little weird if up till 50 exam above 50 fully taxable means we don't deduct 50 and see the difference entire amount taxable see in covid death also there was amount 10 lakhs but that is a theory of gift so there also up to 10 lakhs exam about 10 fully taxable because it is forming part of gift theory and in gift theory if it is exam then exam but if taxable then fully fully means you don't deduct and see the balance fully means 10 lakhs amount was also there in covid death done this thing then last point movable property low price read what is given silver coin purchased by him at 10 lakhs from g when the prevalent market value was 10.5 lakhs and shares purchased by him at 3 lakhs from z sorry h where the market value was this much so there are two things here look silver coin shares but both are what no price or low price low price, low price. and what did i say all the low price you have to aggregate okay in movable properties okay yes immovable property we go property wise okay so movable property and both are low price so combine but you have to see the difference tell me in silver coin what is the benefit you got 50000 because a coin had a market value of 10.5 i have paid 10 so difference of 50000 only so your benefit of 50000 and in shares market value was 3.3 lakhs but i paid 3 lakhs so difference is 30000 so your 30000 you have to aggregate this yes see this thing in the notes you know how i have shown please please pay attention here look in the notes i had written like this look fmv minus actual price 
That is what I did right now. Didn't I do like this? FMV 10.5, actual price 10. See in the notes, FMV actual price. An aggregate means similar transactions you have to combine. That's why aggregate. See here, there were one more shares transaction also. So here the difference was of 50,000. And here the difference was of 30,000. And you have to aggregate. I am just relating that how it was written in the theory. Because many students, they just ignore the wording. So some I understood, that's it. Some you understood, but the theory of wordings also used to understand. FMV minus actual price. And aggregate means shares and silver coin you have to combine. So it is what? Taxable or exempt? Taxable. Because the total is coming above 50,000. So write this in the solution. See how I have shown. Purchase of movable property at low price. You get something for free, language should be gift. You get at low price, the language should start with purchase. Make a fixed protocol. Instead of thinking what to write, what to write, make a rule. You got something for free, your language should be gift of blah blah blah. If it is at low price, purchase of blah blah blah. See if this silver and shares were some immobile property then. In immobile property we keep separate. Then though both would have been exempt. If they were immobile property. This is 50, this is 30. Both would have been exempt. But these are silver and shares movable property. You add, aggregate. There are three aggregations. Did you notice? Money aggregation. Movable property, no price aggregation. Movable property, low price aggregation. Three aggregations. And in immovable property, property wise. Total of outer column, 7,29,000. What do you do with this 7,29,000? This will be added to the other heads of income. Salary, house property, business capital gains. This gets added to other heads. And all heads are combined. Then you get gross total income. Then after that there are some deductions which are not taught yet. And then you calculate the tax. See always when you are solving this sum, you should relate it back to the origin. Because don't we say your fundamentals should always be strong. So that basis of income tax was that first lecture only. So done this thing. See now we have got so many questions where I can give you good homework. Because see in this chapter few things are left. I will not say it's completely over. Relating to gift only. Look. Relating to gift only few points are left. Other than that the topic is over. But see let me tell you one thing. If you see study material. In this topic, you will find other things also. Like I'll tell you right now only. Deemed dividend. Some concept of TDS you will find. But this will be done at an appropriate stage. So in case you find something else, you will feel in the class I was so confident. But looking at the study material, I have lost all my confidence. Please don't feel that. Trust me, everything will be taught at the right time. Okay. Since I have taken this as a first chapter, I cannot take all heavy things right now. Like concept of TDS etc. If I introduce right now, I don't want to spoil the subject. I have to carefully hand your, hold your hand and take it to the destiny. Okay. So other things will come at respective time. But as of now, this chapter is about to accept few points which will be done tomorrow. Right now you take your homework. You will get lot of homework today, okay? Question number one. 
mark question 1 is homework then one you rule don't one rule you don't forget any income which is not taught in dw ramu fakir ji is tax level so don't think that this points are is not taught only and see in our keyword dw ramu fakir ji etc is there so if any income by chance you find in the question which is not covered in our keyword rarely you will find it is taxable okay question 1 then question number 3 okay this family pension you will be able to present see in case you want the presentation see in our theory today only family pension i have shown the presentation see like this they in the homework which i am giving this point is also there family pension today i taught or not yes. so in case you feel how to present sir has given homework but i am not understand how to present you can use this template okay because in this question this family pension will come huh? see once you see family pension by default you have to take standard deduction 1/3 or 15th on which are is remember or not yes. yes if it is army employee then it is fully exempt yes. under section 1019 but this is not a case of army normal employee so there you have to use that formula so this question 3 4 Yes, yes. Many homework today. You don't have any lecture. So what you will do at home? Imagine if you had the lecture today of some other subject after my lecture, you would have sit here or not? So that is the thing. That's why I thought today that I will teach at this stage so that today's free lecture will be utilized. No, no, no. Imagine you had. I have got full right to make you sit till eight, eight here. in fact you should sit here only and finish the homework and then go home that option option is also open so question 1 3 4 5 5 wait wait in fact actually i can give everything but now you tell me what is your appetite wait i'll tell you till question 7 Okay, till seven you can do. So that after that, what will remain? Eight, nine, ten. Three will remain. That I'll give in a different lecture. Okay. So till seven you can do. But see, in seven you will have a doubt. See this gold monetization scheme. It is for gold bonds. You know, last lecture I explained there is something called gold bonds. Yes. In gold bond, what happens? You deposit your gold to the government. and you get a certificate on that every year you get interest and on redemption you get your gold back so that is called gold monetization scheme means your gold is getting monetized otherwise the gold sitting at your home is lying idle yes. but if you give over to government you can earn interest so that is a famous scheme called gold monetization scheme and if you remember in my lecture i told you this scheme has come in india twice once it came in 1999 second time it came in 2015 so this guy has got 2015 scheme so this is our gold bonds only ha huh? otherwise for this small point your answer will be stuck up so till question number 7 all our homework except question 2 which we did in the class so total six questions for homework please do the homework and come please revise and come please come on time please don't ignore me i will check everyone's notebook for this all six homework question plus this notes also you have to update 
okay see this notes is better you write in a separate book this ipad notes this thing this you better write in a separate book and some you keep it in a separate book see it will be helpful because see on exam day i'll tell you the reason on exam day when the time is very less this notes you can recap fast and you can complete the whole subject on exam day but at that time in between sums will come it will not be organized properly you will find messy all theory should come together in one small booklet okay so your homework is six questions and this ipad notes also you have to jot down we'll continue tomorrow yes ipad notes is there in the app. You, i didn't check your homework you you did the homework or not today ipad notes uh, it will be there in the app yeah yeah right now only i'll put yeah every lecture i follow i am very sincere in my work as soon as my lecture is over i will upload the notes in the app so that my students can copy so you also become equally sincere to please do the homework and come please revise and come please come Please come on time. Bye.